and welcome to Good Morning RPG. My name's Leia. This is Matt. We have special guests uh, with this uh, with us this week. Oh shit! Special Hello, guest with show. us this week, Seb. <laughs> hey everyone. Yeah, I'm Seb. If you don't know me, I'm no. I'm uh, I got a little corner of the internet where I do some stuff. Am I? Is is this what I'm doing? Like an introduction? Yeah, thing? yeah. Why not? Yeah, let's go for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. We, yeah, should, no, we I mean... should have said you should, you should say do that. <laughs> We didn't. I'm uh, I'm just a guy who lives near, uh, nearish, I guess, to Matt. <laughs> I guess relatively. No, I got a, I got a no, YouTube you're channel. Just, you're not I just do. a guy. You've been, you've been fucking. Just, I'm just amazing. Good. Good. I'm an AI. Yeah. I'm you're the reason real. we literally have both of these <laughs> webcams. I will point out. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I'm, I do. Yeah. I do a YouTube channel called Atmoseeker, where it's all, uh, just atmospheric effects for tabletop so lighting fog sound mm. that kind of stuff to just make uh immersive gaming experiences uh and sometimes i run games <laughs> with all that stuff so if you're curious about that kind of thing uh atmos seeker on uh youtube for the most part yeah Who's and i just look around in like facebook groups and just look at people's I need cool serotonin models. i want to see the baby i i sense i sense too humble just now because Seb, Seb, okay, I'm literally looking for an image right now because Seb, uh, we started talking last year and since then Seb mm -hmm. has helped us like set up for filming on chapter five, helped us do B-roll, literally like mm -hmm. I'm bringing up a, a shot of like us doing a huge setup in his garage, like literally could not have made a bunch of the stuff we've been making without you and, and I am just like, whoa. On everything you do, because it, oh, it, thanks, it's it's so good. You bring like <laughs> filmmaking to to TTRPG, and I think that's fantastic. I, I've I've noticed a few kind of like creators bringing that filmmaking uh, flair, technique yeah. to things. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm a big fan of like the um, old like miniature effects you see in like um, '80s movies and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's like oh, I just want to have that kind of vibe on a lot of my stuff. So oh, that yeah. stuff's um, so cool though. I love all the like practical kind of things, all the like, um, wherever, I, wherever I can have like practical effects for things like lighting kind of stuff happen. Um, that's, that's kind of stuff I like to jive with and it's cool to kind of do that kind of stuff with your stuff. Yeah. Uh, I know we haven't kind of touched on it for a while. Well, <laughs> well, look, still, I've I been... have, I have good news on that. I literally, uh, Literally, I've been talking to some editors at the moment, so there's some ball rolling moving there, and we're doing some test edits, uh, and basically I'm just like, all right, we've got a little bit of budget, I can put in some editing money, and just the so Whoa. things are moving because clearly the, the ball has stopped rolling for my own editing, and I need to do something about that. So I'm like, okay, monetary investment, we have to do it. Like, that's, that's where I'm at. But uh, in that sense... Um, now now i've been talking with like two or three editors over the week and they're all kind of doing a test edit and we may be able to get onto some more of that stuff because that it'll be like Ooh. we can only do the b-roll when the edit's in a good state because otherwise we're just filming b-roll for what we think we'll need and that's not practical it's better to wait for the the shit to be done well, in terms of time that's, that's spent good. making it yeah that's exciting man yeah so oh, that's yeah that's that's really good that's kind of where i have hear it that's where I've been putting some of my energy because I've been like, I've been really struggling to get the ball like happening. I feel, I've, at least I feel like I have like this year, like the first three months have been really like, you know, among like life stuff, just hard to, hard to have that momentum. And I'm finally starting to get it now, uh, you know, and also like the, you know, I got my diagnosis, I got the mental health ball rolling. So like, it, maybe I'll be able to get some of this stuff in a good spot because I, I need to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I feel like I had a whole whole list of stuff planned. Like, I I should be this far, you know, into yeah. the year. And it's like, holy shit, it's like three three months. What is it? April? March? It is <laughs> nearly April. four months. Yeah, I I am. Yeah, we're almost halfway through the year. <laughs> it's I, like I, I got to be one filming, video out or something. Yeah, I wanted to be filming chapter six around June, July this year, and we we haven't even released five yet. So I'm sitting here going like, well, we shouldn't make more of a backlog of ourselves let's make the other thing right first um but in saying that i mean it's mostly the storage space okay fuck you know there's so much storage for this goddamn footage 
Um, yeah. Uh, but look, in the end, you know, what are we doing it for? We're doing it for to have fun yeah, uh, and much. enjoy making this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, that's, I think that, yeah. That's, a, yeah. I think that, that's such yeah. an important thing in this. And like, that's why it feels slow this year. Because I'm like, I don't want it to not be fun. So I got to take it easy. Like, uh, mm-hmm. actually, this kind of immediately segues into what, have, like, the, the March of the Minis stuff. Like, we were talking in the pre-show, like... I perhaps... thought we were going to do that at the end. We'll do that at the end. We're but, like, talk no, about... I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll flag, I'll foreshadow it now of, like, we were talking in the pre-show okay. a little bit of, like, have we worked on these specific projects too many times and too long without doing something in between? And I think April should be, like, a... In my opinion, I'm sitting here like April's got to be an easy month, got to be like a less intensive project if we're doing any project at all, or literally just like paint your bliss for a little bit and refresh because I feel like, personally myself, I fucking hate painting this yellow. I like genuinely dislike it and I don't want to do it anymore, but I have to finish this thing because it's for Mm -hmm. a friend. Um, But I don't dislike the model as a whole as a result. I just hate the process of some of this and I want to paint for the pleasure of it rather than that I have to. Which mm-hmm. is where I will probably never offer commissions. I already know I won't like that. Um, Must be a good friend. Ooh, I've got, I've got so it much. Is a good, it is a good friend. <laughs> as, as a person who used to, well, I do commissions still, but they are for people I tend to enjoy. Hmm. Um, while the image is up, uh, cause they won't be able to show, show me lizards, uh, until then, um, this image here on stream is, uh, in Seb's garage, and this was our first B-roll day, and we took over all our set props that we had on the table, and we set it all up, uh, like we saw it in the other shots, and then we did, like, cinematic shots where we used this camera slider, got some automated tracking shots, um... Got, like, really beautiful close-ups. I'll load one of those as well. And uh, we spent, like, a day just doing it for one of the scenes. And um, That was a lot of fun. It was really fun. And I use these as promo images all the time now. Like, they are fantastic. And I cannot wait to do more because I think these are, like... This is some of the best work I think I've done in this space. Like, check that out. Give any... Uh, where's my fog door? Your fog uh... door? I yeah, remember I had that little door and we were using oh, it to kind of like disperse think, the fog. I think yeah. that first one I just showed was the one mm. when we were just set up and then we got the fog door out uh-huh. later. I think this area was when we had the fog door because we managed to get this really uh-huh. nice crawling on the floor smoke and I loved that. Mm. Yeah, like, that low lying stuff is good. Yeah, it's so nice. I, man, s- since we've done that, like my... Uh, amassment of fog machines has like tripled. I've got like little ones, big ones, Some like, big as portable head. ones. If, it feels like there's like lots of new stuff coming out with that kind of stuff. Uh, mm. And it's, yeah, it's cool. It's cool for like if you want to just put like I, I think I had like I think I had like a little vape thingy we were using we on the day for like the, the low line yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And now some of that stuff is coming a little bit, bit more affordable on some of the, like the photography. Yeah. And stuff. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so like we also had the Seb's also got these fucking. I actually ended up buying some myself because I was like, I want to play with this in my own time. Check out this mm. macro lens layer. This is like centimeters away from the camera type lens, yeah. and everything just goes in this perfect crisp. Uh, it, uh, I don't know. It's just so out of focus. It's so. I was speechless when I saw how good these looked. Like, I was just like, I've never seen a mini that close and that crisp because I've never been able to do it myself. And turns out it's macro lenses. I, um, I have a macro lens specifically Whoa. for miniatures mm. and it is the best. It was the best gift that I could ever have received. It was funny because my partner was like, oh yeah, I have somebody who does photography in my office and I just like ask him a bajillion question. That's so fair. Yeah, it's really nice when you ha- can do that kind of stuff. I think these were like filters uh, as well. They were like little. These were just, these were just screw on. Yeah. Uh, on top of so like on a, on my like twenty four seventy, you would just shove a macro on it and it would become 
like a oh nice like a super a super close up and it wouldn't lose any quality like you wouldn't even crop Ooh. i loved it mm. um sorry yeah. i'm concentrating i've been i've no, been putting good. off this like this like black rim on this this miniature and now that i'm like getting to the point where i'm probably going to be gluing stuff on soon i'm like i got to do this and seal it in um, okay, get rid of that, and then I will actually have my stuff ready. Um, yeah, no, I just... It, it, I, I'm so impressed with what uh, Seb's been able to help us do. That's, like, I endlessly, endlessly, like, holy shit. Holy shit, every time. Yeah. Every time I look at my own stuff, I'm like, oh. damn. Thanks, man. Yeah, well, I've still got all the buildings and stuff. Should do That's it true. again yeah. sometime. I 100% agree. We should get the rest of it done. Well, now the editors are happening, I'm going to be able to do that, actually. So I'll have um, all of the stuff ready to go. Um, I pour this in. I'll do one of these. Put that water in that wet towel. But um, yeah, if anyone hasn't seen it, check out his YouTube. You can probably find it through. We we tagged him on the the Twitch description and Please. his channel, <laughs> and then it'll go through the whole thing. I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. Oh. I um on Tuesday, Seb, I've been yeah, like come... working all those Tyranids that I got. Oh. And uh, I got a tournament coming up at the end. Like literally, I'm. T minus under a month to get all my shit done for that and go to a tournament with my Pokemons. I, yeah, I thought you had a lot of those. Did you? Because I, I remember you doing the, the Pokemon. Mm, I'm still shades, doing them. The... I need to do a lot of them. This is a problem. Oh. I'm about halfway. Because I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty new to Warhammer. Is it, it's, is it not too late for me to kind of enter the abort? <laughs> oh, to abort? No, just in, in <laughs> Warhammer life. In general. <laughs> um, it might be. Once you pop, you oh, just no. can't stop. Because my mate just gave me a whole bunch of walks. Uh, and I'm, yeah, I've got to paint them now. I still have a box of um, Sylvaneth as well. Just saying, if you Ooh. want 20 more, I found some. 20 more orcs? I, li I literally... F when I say I found these, my brother has a suitcase full of 20-year-old Eldar models. And there was 20 orcs in there. And I went, oh, shit. Well, I guess I've got some orcs now. Uh, for, I, I remember buying them like 15 years ago. I get, is, is that the custom? When you get orcs, you just need lots of them, as many as possible. Yeah, it's a horde army. <laughs> much like, much like the dismay I'm having with my tyranids. Like, mm -hmm. I have like, what I need to do with my tyranids. I need to paint 40 troops. Like, just a little fucking basic guy that's gonna die in one shot. All the EVs I'm doing. All the actually, I can bring up the camera for it. Uh, literally... uh, real quick, I'm gonna change. I'm yeah. gonna, I'll be right back. I'm gonna change my water real quick because it turned real dark real fast. Oh, that's fair. So you can see, like, I've got a mini camera set up here for some of the finished ones. Uh, you can see a bunch of these Pokemon up the top there on that right shelf. You can see my tentacle, yeah. the 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 parasite and stuff on that top shelf. I've only done about 25 of my Pokemon, but 25 is not. It's it's being a horde army. If that was 25 Space Marines, I'd be done. But it's Tyranids, which means it's a horde army, which means you have at least double or triple the amount of models on table as everybody else because your guys just die. They just chaff. Oh. So the problem I'm going to have is now I need to paint like 20 more and each one's a different color scheme. <laughs> so my whole month oh. of April is just going to be like, ah, oh, well. Why do we, yeah, why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we inflict um... pain? Because we fucking love it. Because ADHD yeah. makes you do stupid, stupid things. And now that I'm diagnosed, I could fully say that uh, I can't, I can't just put my half ass into something I've got a stupid idea for. I apparently need mm -hmm. to to whole ass it into a whole project to the point where now I'm taking to go to a goddamn tournament. I didn't have that idea. I was like, I just want to pay my tyrants out of the Leviathan box like Pokemon. And I was like, that'll be all I get. And now I've got a fucking army. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, 
brain go brr, and then you have more models. That is, if oh, you don't want to get into Warhammer, can... that's uh. That's... I, I like it though. Like I, I that's was the watching. Problem. It's I watched good, right? The... It's, uh... I mean, I was watching Dune, like the new one. I was like, oh, yeah. this is making me th think of Warhammer. Think of Warhammer, Hell Divers. It's. I've literally been this month been kit bashing a, a Warhammer model into a Hell Diver. And it's been great. And he looks like here it is. He looks exactly like a Helldiver. Like not even half half assing it. It is that is straight up honest to goodness a Helldiver. I haven't played it. I mean, I'm still trying to drip feed some Baldur's Gate three into my life. Oh, actually, yeah, play that before I have more Helldivers. I know it depends on what. <laughs> if you want to strike, but up the I don't know. I feel like I could play that. For... Yeah. yeah. It's like, if you want to play with a lot like of multiplayers, Helldivers is really good, but I'm also playing Baldur's Gate. Like, I just got to... I'm about halfway through Act 2 in my honor mode, and I... Oh, I finished that game before, but I'm still just as hooked. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't finished it. I'm playing it with friends at the moment, but I want to do a solo thing. Uh, I don't know. I've got, I've, got, I've got my rogue ready to go. He's a little gross rogue guy. It's one of my like I'm taking some of my um, player characters uh, and just turning them like from normal D and D and then just putting them into Baldur's Gate and see how they go. Oh, I've absolutely that was the first thing I did was I played a character that I had made for a stream into a Baldur's Gate character. That's awesome. Yeah, I just wish the character creator was a bit better because I was trying to do like some dwarf. Stuff, and it was kind of mm -hmm. limited. I think for like the human kind of humanoid kind of people, it was a bit more robust. But you know, I was just struggling to get him looking the way I wanted. I'm I'm gonna be honest. Um, I I feel like it's something about more robust looking male figures. Hmm. Yeah, all the dwarves were like super heroic and stuff. And like, no, I want like this weird weed weedy gangly kind of looking dwarf and i couldn't i couldn't make it so he's a he's a halfling now just because i could get something closer he's a dwarf in my eyes uh my partner keeps giving me crap because i keep going like elf or half elf or tiefling and i'm like look I play every other race in actual d and I can just be an elf forever now. <laughs> Get out of my face. Elves are cool. I'm very much that, that player that is like, I, I like, I like playing everything. Yeah. I, well, that's, I mean, we were talking like about a... these yesterday with the Warhammer. You're just like, you're like, you kind of just like, whatever, man. I'm like, yeah, if I had infinite money, time and patience, I would have like a, I would just have most models like and, and that I like. Well, you were saying that to to gear guts. I'm just like oh, I just true, want yeah. my I just want nuns with swords. That's that's, that's all I want. Life. I just want hot chicks with swords. I just like this plastic crack. It's so fun. It's just so fun. I want my church tanks. See if just I want I just I I find do this. For some reason I find painting sisters really tedious. Like specifically. And I don't know why it's, I've drawn that with sisters, and I think it was the Nundums actually that did it for me, um, because they have a lot of filigree, and I don't like painting filigree, I guess. Um, There's a lot of details. Yeah, so like those sisters and Admech, I really don't want to paint Admech. Uh, I haven't even touched one as a result. Uh, but yeah, that like that is the main reason why I don't have a sisters army because I really, really like sisters. I love the church tank aesthetic but I don't want to deal with the painting of them. I don't want to have the painting. Uh, church tank? So they yeah. they have a pipe. Hold on, I'll get it. Yeah, yeah, you get it. <laughs> so they have a pipe organ tank, like with a fucking piano on it. But the pipe organ mm. is a missile launcher, like a mortar. Oh, and it will just oh, shoot them oh. up into the sky. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Okay. And 
so do they have to actually like play music to fire the stuff? Yeah, so the or... ladies yes. in the back will be like, bah, 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 and it'll be like. <laughs> All right. This is That's this great. is a regular. This is a regular tank. That's a here's my regular. Rhino? Regular. Yes, I haven't finished it. I I don't like painting sci-fi stuff, so my guns don't look very convincing. But oh, this oh, is this is a tank. I was no. like, I was this trying is, to, get, I was trying to remember the name for the chassis. Uh, it's just a rhino. Yeah. It's just called rhino. Um, hold on, I knocked off these guns real quick. None of these tanks are finished because I have a hard time with like <laughs> tank stuff. I was about to say, if you have a hard but, time um, with finishing stuff, I've got a fun little condition. I just, I just got to talk to someone about for you. Shut up. <laughs> So this is the ch this is one of the church tanks. This one has stained glass. Oh, well, uh, I, I think that's my favorite tank in Warhammer. So we got a gal. She is she is piloting. Uh, it's also got a nice little altar back there. It doesn't seem very practical, but I like it. <laughs> it is. I mean, you can see through it. It's it's see through. Oh, it's real real see through. I guess yeah. really see through. Don't yeah. really need to look practical when they're just like. If it's not practical, it's church affiliated and we get approved, you know, like they're they're a massive zealot ecclesiarchy, so they're just like our um, faith is our shield. And then this is the one with the organ in it. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Uh, one. these are all missiles, by the way. Yeah. And it's here's fun. the lady playing she's playing the keys to launch. That's so sick. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah, I'm on board. So, I don't know. And I feel like also, as an American, church tanks. Like, let's. what's more on brand for me? <laughs> the other thing that I love so much about, like, Warhammer is that at its core, it, and this gets really lost in some of the chud fandom, it's satire. The whole thing is just satire. Oh, yeah. Like, orcs are just anarchists. The, the Ecclesiarchy and the Imperium, they're just fascists. Like, they're just... They are just xenophobic fascists and... <laughs> It's funny to laugh at, in a way. It's like, it tries to all be grimdark, but like, at its core, it really is funny. And like, it was created mm. as a satire. Um, you know, Tau very clearly are communists, space communists. Um, uh, uh, the Eldar are just elves, but like, cranked up to 11, you know? <laughs> um, we now have the dwarves back, the, the space dwarves, the leagues of Votan are like industrious well, hang on. yeah they just brought the dwarves back into 40k space dwarves yeah look up leagues space of Earth? Votan. they they are a new Shit. faction they came out two years ago they are the reimagining of the squats which are the dwarf race from like the 80s and they have like guys riding harley davidson's in duster cloaks over their armor they've got like mining equipment and they actually they actually pair up with like robotic companions called iron kin that are treated the same as the the dwarves in terms of respect and their ancestor cores are like these ancient millennia old ais that have like started degrading to the point where they now have personalities okay it's pretty rad yeah because i like dwarves sick. in dnd &D, yeah and so. they've got Space dwarves. They've got kind of like an older, like <laughs> in terms of their look, they've got kind of like an OG astronaut vibe. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I actually have a squad. I really liked them when they first came out, so I got a squad of ten, and I've been painting them. Like, do you remember? Did you ever used to have Lego like way back when with the ice climbers and the stuff like that, like rock raiders? Yes, I remember okay. rock raiders. Okay, here's some nostalgia yeah. for you then. Some, oh like, right, I remember this. Green visors. You and worked stuff. on these. So uh you like rock raiders, you say? Check this out. I do. <laughs> this would be my army. Uh, if I was to collect a whole army of Votan, this would be my color scheme. Oh. Uh, welcome in, Wolfgrave. Rock, uh <laughs> yes, we are all Lego. breathing intelligence. And, it's right. a, nice. it, and I was just doing this as a test. I was like, what does this look like? It looks fucking awesome. Like the yellow, the gray, and the, the teal armor actually really works for mm. me. And then like this nice bro. But yeah, you could literally make your whole army look like a Lego color scheme. And because they're already mining, uh, they're, they're like, they're capitalistic miners. This is the, their whole vibe. 
they're capitalism mining dwarves and they export their stuff that's, too that's they, perfect they're also not affiliated <laughs> with the imperium because they don't like them so they get counted as a xenos army even though they're humans uh and they export to like uh, they're actually the um in the law uh they gave tau the technology to make their ion guns uh it turns out so they they work uh -oh. with the tau a little bit and the tau are my best boys yeah this thing's cool yeah yeah i like i reckon uh, you'd like those i just got a whole bunch of orcs yeah so i go to the orcs first do orcs first i mean you could just slap chop the orcs all up you know like use the contrast paint do the thing that i do with the the establishing the values like this and then with a horde army like that, I would recommend not painting them uh, the slow way. I was actually thinking of getting my kids to do a whole bunch of them. I mean, At like, least to start with. This is, I've got some orcs as well, because uh, these are the ones that Envy gave me at PAX one year. This is Slap Chop. This took about an hour after I prepped it up in black and white. I, I, I'm watching on Twitch and I just see an ad for. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hold on. Let me change. Can yeah. I change my camera to. No, it's back. It's you. back. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, here you go. Ah. Yeah, that's great. So he took an hour because I did this thing with it. Like, I just. I prepped him up in black and white with dry brushing. Mm. And then I just put contrast paint over the whole thing. That sounds like my style. Yeah. Like, I actually, there's literally the boss. I forgot to, I haven't done the boss yet. I keep, I forgot that I hadn't done him yet. And that's what the boss looks like before I slap chop him. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'm like, I like the vibe of these guys. I, I, you played in that one shot with us too. Um, over the charity yeah. stuff where we played all orcs. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just fun. The orcs are fun, and I think that's it. That's why I like orcs as well, but I don't want to collect orcs. I just want, like, a couple orc models. Um, but yeah, no. Warhammer, yeah. Warhammer fun. <laughs> In short. Yeah, maybe if, I'm, if I get my kids to paint them, I was like, all right, by the 10th orc, you should, you should be pretty good at painting. <laughs> hey, when when <laughs> I... I think I got into Warhammer when I was about 10 years old. All right. And I went to oh, no. I went to the I went to the game store and I'd play against people and they'd get really mad when a thirty year old got beat by the thirteen year old and I'd be really happy because I beat the adult who knows how to play the game better than me, you know. Hustler. Fun. Well, well, you you got well, house well, you got well, house hustler, of war pretty in your in your general vicinity as well, and they they've got like infinite tables upstairs there. I've never been upstairs. Oh, the whole the whole upstairs area is like fifty gaming tables. Oh. Uh, Matt, uh, Tom wants to know uh more about the dwarfs and how they work with the Tau. Oh yeah, they gave the Tau the technology to start iterating on their ion cannons. Uh, they live nowhere near the Tau. Wait, the lore is dumb. Don't think about it. Yeah, no, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wolf is trying to make us breathe on purpose. If you've seen that, I saw it earlier and it didn't work. So, uh, I did mention it, but you kind of walked, you, you, you talked right over me. Oh, I'm it. so sorry. It's all good. I got, I got a um, of a thing. You, do you mind turning your face camera back on? Because I can't see you now. Oh, no, yeah. I see a NATO oh, popping no. his head up in chat because uh, we're talking about law. Hey. Here's me super excited when I had a day off finally free from school as well to run my PC to finally see my favorite people to open it up and talk orc slander. No, we're not talking orc slander. We're talking orcs are great. I just don't want to collect a whole orc army of orcs. We're trying to convince Seb to start collecting orcs. He got given a bunch, and I also have 20 orcs that he can have if he wants them. <laughs> Stop giving... What about me just says, give this guy orcs, I guess? Because you're nice to me and help me do my projects that I want to... I It makes me want to give you things because I do that with my friends. Yeah. If you don't want yeah, to collect them in me slander, orcs. oh, fair enough. This other guy's giving me orcs. I'm just going to be surrounded by orcs. Look, I'm going to die in I a send, tomb of orcs. I sent all of you guys after that orc game we played. I sent you each a mini and I painted those up. I sent NATO one as well. I sent them to everybody in that group. 
and then I I keep giving my brother minis because I've got two men. I don't know. I just I like making my friends happy with minis, so I keep doing it. Makes me happy. That was a very nice orc. Got him around somewhere. That's a, working. That's from an orc commando set, and that's a great set. Oh. Well, I might add him to my orcs. NATO is painting his orky boys right now. Oh, nice. Oh, wait, is this? That's not a bone arm. I think, is that a mechanical arm? I can't tell. There's too many cherubs. I think that's a mechanical arm. Okay. Shit. Oh. Um, one, two, three. I like Brian four, guilty four my mates torches. into playing Warhammer. Yeah, NATO got me playing Warhammer a little bit with him, uh, and it's been really fun. I need to play. I need to play more games. We should play more games. Uh, so I think next month, uh, I want to try and like get some tabletop simulator going, or and or if I have to, I'm literally I need to go to some game stores. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you can. I'm not trying to. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I need. I need to like play a bunch of games. Like I'm not like. I need to learn the game so I can like confidently play by myself at this thing. Mind you, it's a casual event, so I'm not like. One, I was never going to go hard at it, but two, uh, I just don't, I just feel, I feel bad if I was to like ask about the rules all the time i mean how how often do the rules do the rules adjust much i know they've got what edition are they on now they're 10? on 10 now um have, have you played much of that one it's like that's the, the one that's yeah, one if, I, I if i was if i was trying to like push some new knowledge into my brain is 10 the way to go 10's 10's only been out a year not even a year yet so it's got at least two and a half years left in the edition so it's a good time to jump on also the rules rules are pretty good in in the state they're in like they they're good to pick up and they're also free this time around like the basic rules to play the game are now free oh uh, well you, well you have to pay for the rules you used to you used to yeah uh, you got to pay for your Is army that... rules, though. Well, actually, hold on. You don't technically, but if you want to support all the stuff, yeah. Uh, but there are websites you can use to build your army and also look up the rules because there are, like, databases of it. Is it kind of like D&D, &D, how there's, like, the standard rules everywhere? Yeah. But if you want specific stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Legally, you need the book. <laughs> But like, but they have released the basic quick start rules of the game itself, and then they want you to buy your army rules, like orcs, separately. Like that's the DLC of the game. It's, it's different rules down here in Australia. Yeah. We're convicts, remember? Yeah. That's kind of like it's like. It, it, I think it's kind of. I took mine from like, my friend. I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> staunch on the like. You should buy the models if you want to like support it because that's the, the where they make their money the most but like the rules are kind of just like eh, you do do what you want like legally you should like legally i'm probably you know just you say you should buy it all like don't steal but play warhammer and build warhammer the way you want mm. and there are avenues and resources for you to do all of the above yeah, you only need... So if you're at a full, like, sanctioned event, it all has to be legit. But, like, no one... None of well, us are going to play. Yeah, like, NATO's got it. Like, none of us are ever going to be high-level players because none of us care in that way. I was playing some Shatterpoint the other week. I don't know if you guys ever played that. I've so heard Star of Star Wars skirmish it's almost like star wars legion but it's um it's a small skirmish game but it's uh it's like 
it goes for quite a bit. I think our game went for about three hours. That's um, and it was cool because it's all like cinematic, like lightsaber battles and stuff. Yeah. And um, the, that, that the is... starter, starter set's pretty robust. Shatterpoint is right, a 500 yeah. point Warhammer game. Uh, Warhammer usually lasts about uh, three hours for like a big, you know, like a 2000 point army game type thing. Can last longer. Oh, okay. Um, um, but you should, you, you know, I remember being done in about three hours. I know NATO and I have been like learning the rules and teaching me the rules, so it's been taking longer than that. But like, I know mm. once you're rolling, it'll be a lot quicker. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I just had started like getting my Legion stuff together, and they're like, oh, you should try Shatterpoint. Like, okay. So now, <laughs> now I'm going to start again with like a, another starter set box. In, in Star oh, Wars. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I like Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars is fun. Not my cup Star of tea Wars, overall. Star Wars is but... pretty cool. Leia's really yeah, into I Star like Wars. the original trilogy stuff. I'm I'm really not actually. But you you and your dad like Ironically. I mean is it like the is it the you and your dad nostalgia factor? Because I always get the vibe that you're super into Star Wars. Um, I'm I'm super into the old stuff. Um Yeah. The OT, a lot of right? the a lot of the no, uh, a lot of the new stuff, with the exception of Rogue One. And the first season of Mandalorian has all just been an extreme letdown for me. That's fair. Oh, oh and I like, see, the, I like... The, the the survivor, Jedi survivor, and First Order, I think, or whatever it was called. Those EA games. I liked those. Because here's the thing, is I like the stories that deviate from the stuff we already know. I just feel like there is an entire galaxy. We don't need to focus on the Skywalkers oh for my God, fucking I feel everything. The same way. I feel the same way. I hate, I hate just so much Skywalker bullshit. I um, just do something that's not fucking Jedi all the time. Um, I am a little bit excited for the Acolyte thing to come up. Um, um, um I saw a thing for that. And also one of uh, me and my partner's oh, favorite um, hey, Wongy. Uh, one of my, me and my partner's favorite uh, video essay person who is a trans uh, creator is also going to be in it. Oh, I'm hell yeah. Um, oh, oh, I'm my so God. sorry I'm for the amount of backlash name. in advance they're going to get because that fan base. Um, Leia, Andor is so good. It's fucking not. <laughs> I love Andor. I thought Andor was I will. Great. I will fight somebody on this. Oh, I thought like Andor, Andor was fucking. I thought Andor was fucking trash. Um, I'm sorry. I I'm very upset about the fact that like, why did a guy who's not supposed to be likable before Rogue One get a story? Um, I, I watched the first episode and <laughs> I was like, the the whole point of his character arc in Rogue One is for him to be unlikable and. So you're not gonna pull me in on this this show to no, make him likable. Away. Okay, Girl, I only <laughs> I o I only watched it, like I probably normally wouldn't have watched it until it was like heavily mm -hmm. recommended to me, and then I loved it because it was a cool like heist yeah. kind of thing. Just liked uh, it. A bunch too, of people yeah. a, I, uh... a bunch of people recommended it to me too, and I I gave the first episode a shot. As like afterwards, I was I told my partners, I'm like, look, you guys can watch this if you want to, but I'm I'm complete I'm I was disinterested. I didn't feel like I don't know. That's fair. Um <laughs> Tom's asking what video essay it is, and Envy says, uh, um... I need to I'm actually gonna bring this one up because I find it funny. Um Envy says, We need the Jar Jar Binks origin movie. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We need to see how he becomes a Sith Lord and single-handedly undermines the entire Empire uh, and of the Jedi Order in the uh, first three trilogy movies. That's the thing, right? It's the only way I'm gonna. I think I think I heard a rumor that there were Gungans coming out for Legion. I think it was pretty almost confirmed. So, yeah, I would love a Gungan army. I don't know why. Uh I love those little guys. Uh, Tom, the video essayist is her name is Abigail Thorne. Darth, Darth Thorne. Um, 
Oh shit, uh, I just had it. Uh, philosophy tube. Philosophy tube. She also did a voice in Baldur's Gate, I found out. Who did they voice? Oh wait, hold on, was that Lucretia? Uh, the tiefling girl in the... Uh, okay. No, not Lucretia. No, um, I, yeah, I... I can't no, remember no, no. if it was a drag oh, queen okay. that did Lucretia or not. Someone someone quite well known did Lucretia. Yes. Um, I don't know who that person is, but I, I do recognize their voice. No, yeah, this same. is so you go to if you defeat the Sharans in Baldur's Gate, mm. there is um a a female tiefling that you find later. And now if you've given the noble stock to um Shadowheart, she will remember who this person is. Oh. Um, but it is the tiefling, uh, the tiefling girl who is left at the Sharon, like I don't know, like temple the or enclave. like yeah, yeah. the enclave that's in Baldur's Gate. Um, that is voiced by Abigail Thorne. And that's the, that's uh, the Star yes. Wars person? Uh she is also gonna be in Star Wars. She also, if anybody has, I think it's Nebula. She does an amazing, like, um, she wrote her own theater, like a, a theater production called The Prince, and it was fucking amazing. Um, I, I will forever recommend that. It was, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm blown away by Abigail Thorne. I think she's fucking amazing. She's not allowed to talk about what she's doing in Acolyte yet, but she is definitely in it. I'm very excited to see I that. appreciate them giving uh, people who are contributing to the community meaningfully a shot at being on the actual thing. I think that's a really good idea. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Jon Favreau getting involved for The Mandalorian was one of the smartest decisions that Disney made. You know, Mandalorian season two and three because it was very cash cow eh. Yeah. But like, season liked, one, like, fucking awesome. Season one, you're, <laughs> you're welcome, Tom. Um... Season one was amazing. I liked the episodic feel of it. I liked I that so it too. didn't have, like, it was it was more of, I don't know. It felt candid. I guess it didn't feel like it had to be anything specifically. Well, that, that's kind of the 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 beauty of trial seasons, right? To me, like the yeah, you're you're just kind of getting the feelers for it, and you don't you're not committed to anything. Um, I do see too often that we have these shows that do a trial season really well, and they kind of lose what made it special in the following seasons, uh, because mm -hmm. it was they, they're kind of capitalizing off the brand more than the the episodic. Like I really like the monster of the week or like problem of the week that Mandalorian had for a bit there, and which is why like yeah. the filler episodes in seasons in season two because season three, three was just was, kind of like three was very guilty of that <laughs> shit it was like where where is mando in this episode yeah he's, i like well i like the is, mando -centric... who's these guys eating space ice cream why yeah, we... <laughs> yeah. i actually didn't finish season three i just i watched the first couple and i was like i this sucks i don't like this anymore yeah that, yeah no um, it's it's it like it reached a, uh, like a conclusion at the end of season two and it was like that's, i didn't that's, like the end finished. of season two i really hated the cameo. I um, really, really hated it. Uh, that was dumb. Yeah, it was like, well, it was okay. and then like, um, like, uh, my my dad had said like had asked me to watch Boba Fett. Now Boba Fett is my dad's favorite character of all time. Mm. He has so that much show. Boba Fett stuff in his in his like that show was his rough. space. I and he I I watched it and he was like, so what are your opinions? And I was like, I don't like i don't like knowing anything about him and my dad's like yeah i kind of wish they gave all of his lines to that lady that that like Bo follows Katana him yeah no uh no the no, the, the, the like the assassin lady yeah yeah the assassin cool. lady he's like i feel like she should have gotten all of his lines like she should have done all the talking and just... he should have just them. and i was like I get that, but I also just like everybody just wants to see Boba Fett because Boba Fett is a big popular name, and but it's like, like I feel he can't carry a name. series. I, I I think they did the wrong premise for the whole show. It was like was the pr I actually know, don't even know business what the tycoon, was. <laughs> business tycoon in Tatooine simulator. Like when it was Boba like, Fett nah, this should have been like, like mafia like, or like uh, cartel leader. 
It right. should have been just like he's come out of the Sarlacc -like pit. He's just like ready for revenge, and it's just like you know that Keith Urban like uh, Judge Dredd kind of movie, just like full on, just like yeah. action, should have been badass, that. just yeah. like he's yeah. he's something. Mm -hmm. Something of that vibe. Unstoppable. Because it like was John, just... It, if they had have made Boba Fett as the John Wick of Star Wars... Yeah. Tell me that's not fucking cool. Like, that, that would that be... That would have That's the move. Because you would... You, mm. would, you pay homage to the character that everyone has this, like, ideal of that is this unstoppable juggernaut bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. You're giving him the... the liter like, you know, a band of brothers, but Warhammer 40k. Super popular. Uh, Gaunt's ghosts. John no, Wick, I was gonna say, wait, John they already Wick, did that. Star Wars <laughs> is is Boba Fett. Like, just just take. You don't have to. You don't have to be fully original. You can just take something that already kind of works, but do it in a really nice spin off spin way, and you'll have a hit. Or like, like and, and or, just like can can all the backstory stuff. We don't need to know that shit. Gives, <laughs> don't need, no, all the banter. My, you like, killed my son. Like that, that's all you need. You killed my son, Django. Wait, no, hold on. Is Boba Django? Oh, he's like hunting dad. down. Django he's like, dad? Yeah, he's like hunting down Mace Windu. You know, yeah, like Mace, Mace get, Windu okay. is dead. Yeah, but wouldn't it be great dead. that we know that Mace Windu's dead and he doesn't, and the world has changed around him, uh, where the Sarlacc pit. Oh, but kept people him. come back all the time. Yeah, I know. Start, you know, it's it's the fucking comic book problem. <laughs> you don't see them specifically be gored on screen, even then. Uh, uh, they are not dead. Or. <laughs> I, I know this is going to be a revolutionary idea, guys. Yeah. Just do something fucking new. I want that the most. I think there's a lot of appeal I, of Boba Fett there. I want the new like, the most. However, Disney won't do that because we're in an era of television where no one's fucking making risks. And Marvel tried it in phase four or whatever they tried to do, but they did it in, the, in a weird way. Well, the problem is, is the is, is Marvel's gotten too big. Yeah, it's yeah. it's too it's too much, and they canned. Well, they didn't can, but like they they killed off all of the characters that were the most popular, and now all they have left is the, the like the more like obscure stuff. I was I loved fucking Moon Knight. Moon Knight was fun. I was so I like Moon Knight. I was so pumped, and it helps that I love Egyptian mythology. Like that is like one of my faves. And my partner was telling me, they're like, oh, yeah, they're also doing Blade. I wonder if they're going to do, like, there's a B team not, that is, I'm like, a more, like, a more um, supernatural fight team that is, like, Blade and Moon Knight and some others. I'm like, oh, that would be fucking awesome. They that said, is, like, 100% up my fucking alley. They said they were creating a street-level Avengers for, like, Daredevil and a few of those guys. Uh, and then like a cosmic level and you know, like basically like tiers of Avengers that we can touch base with now. And yeah. I don't mind that idea, but you need to make the characters likable. I think the problem well, is that was like, like... The a the, like the average Joe, the average person doesn't know all these like extra characters yeah, and yeah. comic books. Yeah. And it's just like, it should be just the core five. Like that's, you know, but Avengers. I feel like stuff. we've had that now That's and what... they don't want to do that anymore. And also the actors, it's been like fifteen years. The actors just can't do them just all re the time. Just recast them. Just get yeah. you know, well, get some I... Or or we could just stop having Marvel movies. I feel like it's the the saturation of of superhero movies, like it had its era and now it's just like like I haven't even seen the new Ant Man or oh, the new Guardians of the Galaxies. I actually like because Guardians. like I just I'm I'm so I'm so burnt out on on I think, superheroes. I, I think there are still good stories to tell there. They're just not telling them right. Like they've got people that yeah. haven't even read the comics writing these, oh my these God. movies. Like what are you guys Secret doing? Secret Invasion. What the <laughs> fuck? I love yeah, that, that was plot a... line. Mm. And the guy was like, but, I didn't yeah, read it, it on purpose, and I'm like. This series is going to be fucking crap because why, why? You know that it works if you adapt it. Like this is entirely about your ego that you just have oppositional defiance to what actually will be good for this thing. And you're intentionally making a fucking bad product as a result. Like, what are you doing, man?
Yeah, I don't get it. I just, <laughs> yeah. Like, AI art garbage intro aside, like, that series was the worst piece of anything Marvel's done. Like, the worst. <laughs> I, I don't think I've watched um, the last thing that uh, that Marvel came out with that I watched was uh, Miss Marvel. The best thing Marvel's put out in all of Phase 4 is Loki. Loki is good. I like Loki. Lo have you finished, I also like WandaVision. Wanda Wanda they have saying, a season 2? Shit. They finished Loki's... Yeah, they finished it. You didn't finish season 2, Loki? No. That So... There's, so there's okay, a two two? there's a season two of Loki, <laughs> and it 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 goes hard, man. Like they oh, man. did Loki good. That's and that's why I say out of all of Phase Four, Loki Loki is king because One Division and Loki were tied until Loki season two came out. Like that's and that's where I said. Did my girl Wanda so hard so bad? Yeah, in Strange, but you know. I get it, but we do we do yeah. need more heroes becoming villains. I agree with that. Just the way they handled Wanda with I, this shit. Yeah, I I don't I feel like they could have done it better. Like I feel like the switch was so fast. We didn't have like a nice slow burn. I get I think, where I they're coming from with the with where what they did with her character, but like. I don't know. My partner had warned me that, like, when we watched WandaVision, he was like, you know, Wanda can go both ways. Sometimes she's a villain. Sometimes she's the hero. Yeah, so I agree. So just be ready for that. And I was like, okay, I will be ready for that. And I feel like... I don't. Mm. What I don't like about Wanda that they do with her is that they kind of treat her as a bit of a torture porn character. Um, And when I say torture porn, I mean, like, it, it like that Lara Croft Tomb Raider game. They can't have this strong character without just kicking them down constantly. Like, like, and not just kicking them down, but like brutally keeping them down. Like almost more so than other characters, it feels like. She only ever has bad shit happen. She can't get a win almost mm -hmm. by design, which is kind of like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's good for the first one or two, but when you get to like five and six like you know she's been through the ringer since age of ultron and never had a break but i think, but I think that's maybe contribute to like the the intenseness I don't, know, I don't know maybe that was the beginning of the end for her um <laughs> i mean seb we can't see what you're painting because all we can see is the top of your head <laughs> there you go. i mean your hair is no, glorious it's a secret. but <laughs> I mean, like, if, if that's your intention really of the character, it, okay? give, I think give her some happiness moments. Like, she did get with Vision, but then Vision died and and all of that. It's like... They, yeah. They can't... Like, I thought that was... That was harsh. Like, what? I only we, get, like, we 30 minutes of, to die, of goodness. Though. That was, like, telegraphed. Yes, I know. Like, it was telegraphed, but it was also, like, well, why do we punish her in other ways when we know that the biggest punishment of all is already coming, you know? I just... Why? I vortex mixer does not sound good oh uh, did you drop it no i dropped mine oh wait outside. no it's just it, it's just the shaker ball sorry oh, i was like ooh, it is making a not good noise yeah and it's just uh we had to buy a new uh, one at one point see. because uh i <laughs> uh just dropped it and it it was like after that and we went oh no just got one of those little shaky boob things very very good mm. it's got to have a ball in it inside it though like the middle ball for it to do something no no you can you just gotta you just gotta put it on for a bit longer give it the time to cook let um it cook. i i also flip my my uh paints upside down because sometimes if they're stuck on the bottom of the the paint Having them turned upside down is a good idea. Yeah, I, I usually oh, okay. I'll usually mix it upside down and right way up for about ten seconds each, and still give it a shake because these are the more my paints sit, the more they kind of uh, congeal themselves. Ooh, okay. Real quick, side note. I'm gonna go back to something I talked to earl talked about earlier because I saw um a thing. Uh, Nocturne is the character's name in BGE3. Oh, Nocturne. This I is, I've heard of this that. This is name. her. This is this is her. You can find her in Shar's temple, or Shar's. Oh, I know her. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I enclave. recognize that character. Yeah. Anyways, 
It was like bugging me. <laughs> I was like, what? Is she a tiefling? <laughs> Couldn't remember. <laughs> Wait, Matt, that went from I dropped it to Jess dropped it. Parks and Rec meme. Who no, broke no, so, it? so I was remembering Jess <laughs> dropped it because she had she bought the new one. Uh, and that's, I thought, because usually it's me that does the stupid shit. And, and for once it was Jess. So like my default is I broke it. Wait, no, I didn't. <laughs> but yes, no, we actually, we've got two vortex mixes now. One just sounds horrible. <laughs> Still works. Just not as good. Not a, not a stream friendly one. No, it's, it's, it's like now. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like it's mixing concrete. Oh man, I gotta paint chain now. I'm adding like black, like black gray to the cape just to give it some like deeper contrast. Cause I was looking at it going like the highlights look good, but there's not enough lows. So I'm like squiggling in some, uh, some like quite dark gray into all of the recesses. Are using all your fancy paints. I'm just using dollar store craft. I still think that <laughs> stuff. I mean, I only I'm only using these ones because I spent too much money on them. Uh, but yeah, to be fair, I'm I'm <laughs> painting something bigger, so I guess I don't need. Oh the, yeah, that's need all. Those fine, fine I, granules. I also would be using craft. Actually, I have a bucket of craft paint somewhere for terrain exactly. Yeah, same. Imagine how many five dollar pots of Citadel you're gonna go through training that grey on that on that torch. <laughs> Be doing a lot of watering down, I'll tell you that. Not even watering down, you'd just be you'd just be like <laughs> Sorry. You'd be gushing through it. Like one brush load would be mm. five dollars. <laughs> man got me wanting to watch that that prince thing again prince thing yeah so i was talking about that abigail thorne she does a, a show that is an interpretation of hamlet called the prince oh but i'm pretty sure that the show is low-key about the trans experience which is it was fucking amazing The boop, 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 boop. Huh? Oh, sorry. I'm just uh. <laughs> You're doing that concentration thing where yeah. we get real quiet. I also I I don't know if my brain's a bit weird today because I started some meds last night and so I don't mm -hmm. know if it's uh, doing anything yet. But I did wake up less tired than normal, so I'm like I'll count that as a win. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it said it said like I could get like blurry vision and and nausea, headaches, but it could be like irritability. But you could also just be like more up generally. So I don't know if that's a thing. But I also, mm. you know, I'm like I'm trying not to like be anxious about anything, because then I'm just going to. Yeah, you're just gonna them, trigger you know? those things anyways. Yeah, that's what Jess was like. She was like, if you if you focus on them, <laughs> then you're gonna you're gonna get them. Because you're you're, gonna, you're bringing a man yeah, almost. Freak, yeah, basically you're like freaking your your body out. And mm -hmm, I get that. So yeah, it was scary. Like the the concept of taking him for the first time as well. Because I'm like, is this like you know I'm experiencing in real time? Uh, how much is this gonna change what I'm doing day to day? You know, mm -hmm. I don't. I just I don't know. And that's scary. That is, that's a thing. I had, I had games, the same. Matt? Sorry. Still running games? Yeah, all the time. That's what pays my rent. Um. <laughs> Man, 
Yeah, I haven't run a game in a while. I um, I still haven't been able to run my casual game in a while. But um, no, I was running my my uh, paid Avernus game last night. I was running my Spelljammer game the other night. Um, they're trying to make a railgun out of their hippo ship. Um, with the whole ship. The whole ship is basically a giant gun. Uh, it's a, it, the frame of it's called a bombard if you know Spelljammer, and it's basically a massive cannon with a ship built around it. Uh, except in their case, <laughs> they've designed theirs to look like a giant hippo, and in the hippo's mouth is the cannon. Uh, and they want to. I'm currently talking with them on how to make a Spelljammer fantasy railgun to be their main operating weapon out of the uh, ship's hull, and. Uh, I'm trying to come up with a both balanced but reasonable amount of gold cost in spells they need to use and operate to be able to get... Railgun's going to be the strongest weapon in the game, pretty much, and it's going to be like you need to take down, use this to take down titanic creatures or other ships type thing. So... You could, you could, you could go cheaper but like uh, maybe prone to some uh, interesting malfunctions. So I, I <laughs> maybe. didn't go with that. I went cheap. So someone suggested... Oh my goodness, a follower. Oh, thank you for the follow. Um, uh, so what I ended up doing was I did a... I did a thing where a player... I was like, okay, what if it takes like four telekinesis spells to to uh, basically we're going we're gonna to create a stress point of your piece of ammunition. So if we get four telekinesis spells angled inwards on your barrel, all projecting telekinesis to basically quantum lock a piece of ammunition, in this case, a, a charged metal beam, because railguns shoot hot ionized metal, uh, out your barrel. Now, quantum locking it in place, theoretically, you know, this is fantasy science, so we're just kind of like bullshitting a little bit, but uh, if you quantum lock it in space, the only thing you would need to send it propelling forward using the physics would be an explosion or propellant of some kind. So we're like, okay, so if we have four telekinesis spells, locking it in place, creating a stress point, and a glyph of warding at the back to act as your explosive propellant, that thing, that puppy gonna fly. Because the second that balance is off key, it's just gonna squeeze it out at, at enormous pressure through space. And because there's no resistance in space, that is going to travel at an infinite, uh, until it hits something, uh, no speed loss, no, no anything other than like it just drifting through space. So the, uh, the ammo factor isn't actually, so I basically like, if you use just a, a, an iron rod, like a, like a girder, that's your cheapest ammo. You can put whatever you want in there to do extra damage. You can do that. You'll be paying for that. Uh, and then the cost in the, the spell is you need four people casting telekinesis as an action. And if you don't want to cast telekinesis as an action, it means you need four level four spell scrolls of telekinesis, which is usually about 900 gold per scroll, which means that per shot is... of a railgun plus a glyph of warding, which is a level three spell, so about another 600 gold per shot, you're looking at about 3,000 gold worth of materials. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty high high caliber single shot rifle. They take all the fun out of it. Sounds like a lot of bookkeeping. <laughs> I'm gonna, I basically with, 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 I'm trying to make it so that they can't just one shot an enemy and then, oh. and then my encounter's over basically. <laughs> like Aww. that's what I want to avoid. I want to make sure that like, they don't just go like, all right, we've come across another enemy. Time to load the rail gun. And then we just finish the game, you know? Like, I don't want it to be moot. And it's also like they've done like engineering degrees. So there was genuine like math and science going into some of the Get discussions. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we were I doing. Math in my D&D games. Well, I, I am not an engineer. Three of them have a degree in it. And they were literally just messaging me in chat. They're like, Matt, I got an idea. And I'm like, hit me. And they go, what if... Now, what if, can we make the telekinesis spells scale with damage? So we need minimum two and we get the minimum damage. But if we add more telekinesis spells, therefore the cost goes higher, can we scale the damage appropriately like that? And I went, 
that's balance. That's pretty good. That's pretty good design. Let's go with that. So we're going to scale the damage of their railgun based on the amount of telekinesis spells that they slot around the barrel, probably up until a maximum of like eight, because you know we got to have a ceiling somewhere. <laughs> because balance. Yeah. So, uh, I, I I really liked the idea they were pitching. So I'm probably going to go for it. Thank you, Dale, for the tribute to the tech goblins. Hey, anyone new in chat, check out uh, uh, if Tom or someone wants to do it for him because it's a bit of a exp uh, expensive, um, expensive redeem. Uh, can we get a show me lizards uh, in the chat? Uh, also, oh, I've got, I have the points. BLT vampire, hello, welcome to the chat. Good to see you. Hello. Show us wizards. Show us lizards. The lizards. Oh, thanks, ghost. Uh, oh, we got two of them. Yeah, we got two of them. Uh, but thankfully, uh, on the second one, we've got uh, we 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 usually show me lizards is the the spot where they show up the most. Just as a heads up for everyone in chat. Uh, and I'm probably gonna lower those costs of the other ones lower than show me lizards because you're not guaranteed that they'll be in that spot. Anyway, Seb, this is what I've done with my Insta Link. By the way, I have a new li baby lizard tank. And I have a little uh -huh. lizard cam that I can activate and we can set it to like where they are in the tank. So if I can go like over here to their hammocks, I can go to the full view of the tank or I can go uh, straight to the boys and they seem to be having a little resty up here. Oh, that's rad. Yeah. And I, I've hooked all of this up to my stream deck. So I literally have like a D-pad and a zoom pad uh, set up. So that like... I'm gonna set up so chat can control it with commands and maybe the um and maybe the starting soon one day. And then they can just like use exclamation up down and it'll like move the camera on their end. But the chat can now activate the lizard camera when they want for channel points. Oh, that's also, cool. I don't know if I've said hello to to Ghost Swarm today. Hello, Ghost Swarm, hello, even ghost. though if you're lurking. Um Yeah. Fun. I had a lot of fun setting that up. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. doing good. Feel free to lurk if you're not yeah, feeling still, chatty. I'm still trying to get my cam set up for the game room over there. Are you using Streamerbot I've got something. for yours? No. Wait, Streamerbot? The oh, Obspot uh, one? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's like a separate program that links with OBS. Uh, Nutty put, uh, put me onto it. Um... Oh. Uh, and basically, oh, is this for... that's how I triggered all of this stuff with my stream deck. Um, oh, right. He, he's got a really good tutorial on like what it does and how to use it, but I think it could be helpful because you, you like that technical stuff with your setup, so it could work for some of your integrations. And you can set it up to have like, like integrations with uh, your YouTube streams too. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how much... I want to integrate that stuff, like uh, use it like viewer control, but well, it doesn't have to be viewer yeah, control. Still... <laughs> a lot of it's like it's like if this then that, but in an OBS specific um, plugin program. So it's like okay. So what I set up was when Leia triggers "Show Me Lizards" uh, as a channel reward, the program will read that and it goes, "If this is triggered, bring up a source in OBS for Lizard Cam." And you can do that with many other things. That does sound pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I should should do something like that. It's quite customizable and you don't need to use code at all. That's good. Because uh, I can't code. I don't at all. Yeah, I, do. I, I can't do that stuff. Uh, vampire, to answer, to, to answer your question, Vampire... Um, the lizards are yet to be, uh, are, are yet to be named. Oh no, I have an update um, on that after yesterday. Oh, you, I was about to say, but it sounds like the runners up right now are, uh, what is it? Ba Baha and Tia. Baha and Tia after yeah. Bahama and Tiamat. So I'm happy to, I'm happy to say that yes, I liked the name enough. Uh, I've named the one that's more scared of me, uh, Tia, for Tiamat, because uh, they run away a lot. And, you know, if you're an adventurer yeah. uh, like me, Tiamat should be running away from me. Uh, whereas Bahamut, 
Baja is uh, is a lot chiller and just kind of watches me do stuff. So Baja and Tia are going to be the lizard names, I think. And I and I like the shortened version of it. And if someone's like, oh, what's Baja and Tia from? I'd be like, I'm a big D&D nerd. So it's Bahamut Tiamat because they're my little dragons. Yeah, the baby. Yeah, the little baby. The little baby dragon gods. Oh, show me the baby. And now show me the big baby. <laughs> wow. Um, you're a lizard, Larry, and a thumping good one, I'd imagine. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'll go, I'm going with, uh, Baja and Tia. I, I, I'm liking them. The other, the other names that I had that were kind of, like, fitting in were Magni and Modi. Uh, from, like, is that Thor's children? Uh, yes, those are Thor's sons. Yeah, Thor's sons. Because I, like, I don't have an attachment to them, which is why I didn't go with them. Uh, but I liked the flow of their names. Those, the, yeah, those they're, are very cool. They're good names. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they weren't hitting me with the joy, so I didn't go with them. Hey, Screen, how you doing? Hey! Uh, we're talking about my baby lizard names. We officially have some Bahamut and Tiamat action. Yeah. I need to feed them after this. They actually didn't eat all their crickets yesterday, so I'm hoping they ate some... Uh, they're looking at me now. They looked at them. Um, I'm hoping they ate the last ones this morning. All right. I got the tricky part done on these guys you guys want to know what i'm painting <laughs> i know what you're painting so i'm painting these yeah you know what i'm painting so these are some stls of design that you can 3d print um and they are these uh little dungeon torches that you can Ooh. plug this like little led kind of bulb into and they light up yeah yeah we're gonna get the top one Head. Yeah. yeah. So this is one that's finished. But I've got a mm -hmm. setup around the corner where I've got like a little raised playing area. And I've got these sit uh, kind of like mounted around it. And nice. on the DM side, I've got like these little switches so I can turn them off and on individually. I'm going to use Ooh. those for like tracking yeah. uh, initiative. Now it looks Oh, looks you do an cool. initiative for uh, those now. That's rad. Um, yeah, you can you can use them for initiative or like tracking torchlight, that kind of thing. I like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's all the kind of time with the new video I'm working on at the moment about caves. Nice. Uh, we used those ones. Are they the little ones or are they the big ones? These are the little ones. So yeah. you got the big ones. So I've got the reference image up now. Uh, on our season that we just filmed, you can see a couple of them in the back there. They're, and that's uh, if you want scale. Um, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I've I really, I loved ones. having those yeah. back there because it was a nice like flickering. The flickering's really nice. Oh god. Oh man, it's cobwebs on this one. It's getting a little, little too realistic. <laughs> These ones. Yeah, we got the big ones. I think you can turn it on. I love that you can just switch your camera like that. That's rad. And we've got. Yeah, it's all wireless and stuff. They kind of go in there. I've got, yeah, it's all in my shop. I don't know. Didn't want to really, really want to do like a spruik or something. But yeah, yeah I've got big ones. Got yeah, big ones. Here's your plug. These ones, I love these ones are cool because they're like. You should buy some. <laughs> oh, those little ones these are cute are, as hell. These ones are cool because they're, yeah, they go on like, they're designed to kind of go on like a DM screen yeah, so you can yeah. have them on the front. So, are the little um, ones but are yeah, STLs, they, they all, right? Or they all They're all STLs, oh. so they all print su supportless as well. Hmm. They don't have to mess around with all that kind of stuff. And and um, what bulb yeah, have all... you got in those? Like, is that like a like how have you done that? Is that a wireless bulb thing? Like, what's that? For anyone? Yeah, this is know. like a uh, a wireless, like rechargeable, like little flame bulb kind of thing. You can put like regular kind of like socketed ones in them as well. You can put like a hue bulb um, in there too, right? Like, or is it just yeah, like you can put like 
yeah regular hue bulbs in there whatever um because there's like a hole in the back to kind of feed cables through and stuff but yeah they're cool i've got a few of them kind of mounted around and yeah they're, especially if you've got like the battery rechargeable ones super nice and uh rechargeable and portable you can just pop them up hang them up on the wall instant uh it's instant atmosphere with that kind of stuff i found yeah it's been cool to kind of like transport around uh especially mm. like i quite like the little miniature ones because kind of have your Those own like little pocket dungeon setup yeah yeah they're good good gifts i think yeah for, um for dms if yeah, I didn't got, have too much crap in my bag them. already, that'd be like a nice little aesthetic thing to add to my kit. Because like, I Lord see, knows yeah. I have nice too much one. in my bag already. Man, you, you just have a bag. That's that's cool. I've got like a board game bag like and it fits like... The uh, the board game bag I have is 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 no joke massive because it... It fits seven ticket to ride size ticket to ride size games. If you know that's that, a, box. that's a big boy. Big boy bag, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it fits. It fits like two Tupperwares of minis, my dungeon tiles, the dry erase ones. Um, I've got my spell effects in there. I've got uh, uh, condition token rings. I've got like big fifteen uh, foot uh, circle. Like I've got, I've got um, spell effect templates in plastic from 15 foot uh, cones all the way up to fireball. Um, God, what else is there? There's a monster Tupperware, and then there's flying stands. I also found a, a really cool like, there's like a cr transparent acrylic flight stand rises that um, I think it's Paizo makes them for Pathfinder, and they rise up to like 90 feet, so you can display the height of flying creatures. I feel like I'm mixed on flight stands. Like, I don't know. I I like being able to visualize how how high they go and stuff, but like it becomes a balancing act, uh, especially if you got some got, terrain around. I got if, so many. If you got just simple mat. I one, know. But... I got I got so many bloody players who love optimizing their character, and one of the first optimizing things is. Flight stand, uh, flying creatures. Leia, your camera's frozen, by the way. Leia? Did we, we lose her. I think we're about to lose Leia. I think it was flight stands. Flight stands. It's flight stands. <laughs> Hold on, let me just... Um, but yeah, I've been... Yeah, the, the, they look great if you can like manage them i found like you probably you probably use like dry erase kind of like mats and stuff right um yeah i've got like dry erase um i've got dry erase markers for for that stuff uh and then i've got i'm waiting for the discord to cut out and fuck up the overlay in a sec um yeah so there's dry erase markers and then uh no that's yeah that's the main thing i've it's got a, yeah that's the main bit yeah i was just yeah because i've got a lot of like bumpy <laughs> terrain and stuff like mats like i don't usually have like mats i usually have like um yeah quite textured stuff i gotta keep mine so when you put like a so flight stand on it it's just... yeah well thankfully all of my maps have to be flat because i need to be able to bring it with me um so like mm. i've got like the poster maps that i can just stick a flight stand on and they have like buildings and stuff drawn onto them but overall um overall it's like everything i can't bring terrain with me because it would just be like another top of, it would be like a massive tupperware full of everything right mm. so i kind of like them i don't uh, know if you've seen computer it has there's... frozen and shut down there's that oh we've moved I'm down yeah, here, guys. You're, you're still there. <laughs> Hold on, I'll put you on the. I'll put you on. The, yeah, I can I'll, see. I'll I can see big. a bit of your face and your body there. I'm still here. <laughs> I've got three. I've got three. Hold on. Let me just um. Let me come over here real quick. And uh, see. Oh, I hear. I hear her coming back. I will not mess with the overlay. I'm, <laughs> I'm the shattered sim. Hey, there you are. Hello. 
What happened? Is it just having a shutdown? Um, this happened twice to me during my game on Tuesday. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's I, um, I first lose, like I first, first I can't hear anything. Hmm. Um, and then everything freezes. Oh no. And now my camera's not working again. What did we do last time there? I think we unplugged it and plugged it back in and it, it worked again. Mm-hmm. I see it. I can see it moving around like it's trying to do something. Mm hmm. All right. Do you want to have a little BRB screen? All right. I need a minute. No worries. We'll go, we'll go to a BRB screen for about five minutes, sort this out, and see where we're at. Uh, we'll be back, everyone. Okay, so the BRB screen hasn't been set up yet, so I'm just going to go back to the starting soon screen. Bye-bye. <laughs> Follow up.
All right, we're on this overlay now. We're on this one now. And I uh, I was like, oh, how can I quickly hey. modify this? There we go, there we go. All right. Um, Leia, it looks like Leia's stuff's not behaving properly. So she said she'll just bow out and take a walk. So uh, wish her some luck in the Discord, everyone. Uh, tech is not kind to us sometimes. Uh, and, and yeah, no, it's yeah. just, it's technology's, just, technology's great. It, it was giving us a bit of grief. <laughs> I don't know. It was giving us grief in pre-show too. And it's just like, ah, uh, sometimes it's better just to offer tribute to those tech goblins. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, no, sometimes it's just, it's just not the day for it. And it looks like today was not that day. Um, we'll see if it's working. Also, the stress of doing lots of streams is is a lot so i don't blame anyone for being like tech's not working let's not mess with it let's do it off pressure you know so hey this little little set got your little box right. down there yeah uh, all right Right. Yeah, look, I, I feel like technology just gets better and better these days, right? With all, like, the voice commands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I always have things just, like, not working. It's like, this is where I want AI to kind of, like, kick in here. Like, I you want... make this stuff work. I want you know, AI I know it is, in everyone's the got, like... sense like that. Yeah, I want that AI. I don't want fucking theft generation software. Um, But, yeah, it's just, like... Like, when we cut our Premiere projects, we use a thing called Autopod which is like an AI tool that reads okay. the audio waveform and cuts it based on, to the camera, based on who's talking. And that is awesome. I love that stuff. Yeah, that's neat. Hmm. Yeah, stuff to make stuff easier. Or, like, everyone's got their own, like, technology setups and stuff. Like, the amount of times my wife comes up to me... Like, she's forgotten completely how to use computers. Now, she used to know. And then we got married. And I was like, well, I don't have stuff anymore. So now I'm the technic technical yeah. goblin in the house i'm not in my family uh, uh, yeah i hate hate computers this is always it, it, it i you know why i hate it i you know why seb hates computers because it's, it's the promise you know it's a promise that it will make things easier makes things like slicker look nice and stuff and just it's just a liar man <laughs> yeah she lies to us man no that's fair though that's like but then, I, but at the same time, I need it. <laughs> yeah, like our jobs literally depend on it to have this technology. But then we get cool things it's like a... I can I can spend all day creating a lizard cam so I can show off Baha and Tia, and uh, now everybody gets to oh, look at the little hammock. Oh, look at that! See, it's all we worth. get cool tech like this, and now you can redeem it with channel points, like. Get out of here, little guys. Um, worth it. It's all worth it if we can see lizards. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, I couldn't see oh, them. Hold on, I'll I'm, bring them back up. Quick. Just for you, Seb. I'll bring them back up. There you go. Lizard points. I'm using my lizards. I do actually. How many points do we need for lizard cam um, it's normally? Because because I want to be able to still see my um painting camera, it does cost a thousand points. Um, which is, I know it's not cheap, but it means okay. that I know, I know that people like Tom who have like a hundred thousand points and will always have a lot of points could also trigger it for other people. Okay. All right. Cause I, uh, yeah, I've almost got 2000. So, uh, that's two lizards. I'll save two lizards. I'll save it. I'll save them. Save my lizard cam points. What else can I do with channel points? Um... What have I got enabled? Uh, okay, so you for one, it, you can, can offer tribute these... to the tech goblins. <laughs> uh, okay, for a hundred, you can make us hydrate, but normal like. Okay. Uh, what's that... Finn up to? For two thousand, you can see the Finn cam on the webcam. Who's Who's Finn? Oh, uh, okay. He'll, he'll come okay. up. Uh, little guy back here. Oh, actually, he's over here somewhere on my shelf. The webcam's looking over there now. That's what's Finn's up to. Technically, the lizards are hanging out together. That's four lizards. Um, uh, and that should automatically go away at about 30 seconds. What's the... What's the hydrate normally thing? Okay, so... Pour, pour, 
So it's just it's Pour just take a drink. On you. Like it's just like people are people because oh. because we forget to hydrate ourselves and drink and breathe. So there's a channel point redemption for both hydrate and breathe. The reason why it's called hydrate but normal like is because you'll see down at a hundred thousand points there's something called cursed coffee. Now that is the lovely paint water that's beside us. So if you have a hundred thousand points, you can redeem us to to to. You know, much like, uh, I think the other reason we do it is if we get a, like a tier five or above hype train, we'll, we'll tend to drink some paint water because we're sadists yeah. and we'll do anything for money. Um, have you, have you ever had to do it? Yep. Uh, we've got two TikToks, uh, of <laughs> us doing it. Uh, oh, man. the first time it happened, I was like, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do it. Um, and, uh, I made a TikTok. It was to Bo Burnham's, I made you some content. Uh, and then I uh, posted that. And then the second time it happened, the deal was that Leia had to do it. So there's one of both of us drinking some paint water on our TikTok. I'm not doing it. Uh, me do it. No, guests do I not I don't even know do what's it. in this cup. Guests it's don't like... have to do it. Uh, there's also it a might water be like bottle resin check. in here or something. There's also a water bottle check because I've got a big, big bastard of a water bottle over here. And I, I need to be a good boy and drink drink one of these a day. But it has goals on it. So it's like 7 a.m. Good morning. 9 a.m. Hydrate yourself. 11 a.m. Remember your goal. Keep crushing. Chugging. Feeling awesome. Don't give up. Almost finished. You did it. And that's how much we're oh, supposed man, to drink are... in a day. Wow, you're a good hydrating boy. No, I'm I've, not, uh, because this no, is from I had, days I had... ago. <laughs> oh, well, Bad at least boy. you're thinking about I'm it. I'm thinking I've of trying. Had... Yeah, I hydrate with coffees. Mostly coffees and wine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's water in it. Sure. <laughs> Sometimes good enough. I can remember the B on the camera here. Yeah, it's hard, upside right? Down. Can't. Oh. oh no, I'm holding it upside down. You <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a, okay, so uh, here's another channel point. We have to do a lore drop, which is basically just tell a story. Um, lore drop. Lore drop. And there's like, also one that like Leia and I have to do a lot of time called compliments, where we have to compliment each other. And if you if you cringe, don't accept the compliment or look uncomfortable or anything like that, we get to restart and we have to keep doing it until the compliment is accepted genuinely. <laughs> Do, we, do you have reverse compliments? Uh, so basically, usually on a compliments redeem, someone will be like, compliments for this person. Oh, no, yeah. I meant more like, let's just talk shit about each other's models. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> but we can do that regularly without the compliments. But usually talking shit about each other will result in a compliments. <laughs> oh. So it's a dangerous yeah, let's, game. Let's bet. Let's, let's pra practice uh just bagging each other's models like talking about how shit they are no i don't want right. to do that yes let, let's do no, it no i don't no, want let's it. be creative i, I, I want to support your endeavors no no no, no. <laughs> yeah show me show me show me your model i want to see it see no because you're models. baiting me now <laughs> you're being bad you're being a bad bad friend <laughs> i feel like the the model's doing all the heavy lifting on this paint job oh just dry brushing and washing. <laughs> this is all he's doing. <laughs> um, best hydration law drop, though. Uh, uh, there was one time where I had to just chug an entire water bottle, I'm pretty sure. And that was hard because I'd just eaten food as well. So my stomach was already full. And then I made it double full by chugging about 600 mils of water or more out of a pump bottle. I wouldn't recommend doing it with milk. I've uh, done... That I've, kind of similar with milk. I'm pretty sure I'm lactose intolerant, <laughs> uh, so that would be a terrible, terrible idea for me. Oh. I think it was after eating something insanely spicy. Wait, but I didn't make you do that. Didn't did you I? do spicy things on this channel too? I, I do. You... I frequently still do. Yeah. Uh, like is that we were... a points thingy? No, that's usually special case, like charity, because otherwise I would never fucking have a. I would never have a poop. That is safe ever again if I was constantly doing that. But mind you, it was like a fifty dollars donation to, for me to do that. Safe poop. Yeah. Well, Everyone you know, wants you know, that, when, that you, when you have too spicy food and it's just like <laughs> like later in the day. Sure, you did. 
Do you think they have safe poops in the Imperium? I think not. I don't think they poop at all. I'm pretty sure things. all their organs are ground up into mush and they don't eat or do that. There's gonna have to be that, like, some kind of like filtration thing in the suit or well, something. Or they just shit not, on the battlefield. They're not humans anymore, <laughs> so I don't think they... I think they have all of their nutrients and stuff just pumped into their blood. Like, they're not really I, people. I feel like Space this is, this is a people. mixed... This is a missed corner of, like... 40k lore. I would say it'd be the like... the Imperial Guard probably have toilets and things, but mm. but like the Space Marines, I'm pretty sure they can't really get out of their suits properly. So I think Are they, they like fused in there, or is it like a suit they could take off? They, they take off the armor, but there's like um there's like an under black suit that is permanently like a okay. second skin of theirs, and I don't know uh. how they. I also know I'm pretty sure they're all chemically castrated as well. Like they they're all they're all I'm pretty sure they're all Unix. Like they don't need they're all clones. They don't need to be like fucking or anything. So they just they just don't have junk. Have you seen I saw an animation on YouTube it was called Space King or something. <laughs> it was like 40k but like super exaggerated kind of thing. Oh, I and did it, see it that going bit, around. Was, I should watch that. Yeah. Is it good? That had that had something about uh, castration, I guess, in it. Yeah. But it was reverse castration. Well, it's like, it's like, because 40K, it doesn't really go into like the logistics of all of that stuff. So it's like, you kind of got to make some assumptions. And the assumption usually is that they're Unix, but then like, then like the man baby community part of 40K will be like, no, my power fantasy men, they have testicles, I swear. Oh. Uh. I feel like this is a good uh, a mission set for like a 40k skirmish kind of thing. It's like, all right, in in five rounds, you're all gonna shit your pants. <laughs> but like, the tower are guarding the uh, toilet complex in here. So, if I was ever to do a, back. if I was to ever <laughs> do like, and I I want to maybe one day, I want to set up a table and do some 40k streams properly with like the points and everything. Mm. I will do that. I will be the defending Tau army, and we will have a regiment of Imperial Guard, and their objective is solely get to the toilet. And their objective I feel markers like... will be toilets, and then there will be porta potties yeah, in like... the back line. No, no, no. Tau toilets? Those are like the Japanese toilets that do everything. They charge your phone. That's why they want them, because they're the good toilets. Yeah. They charge your phone, yeah. they charge the las gun, <laughs> they, they, they got the bidet on them. That's, mm. that's an ideal toilet in the 41st millennium. So the Tau has the technology toilet and the Imperial Guard want them to be able to do a poop. Yeah. Imperial Guard, they get the bucket. They probably... Look, no doubt they probably do, though. Oh, man. That battlefield must stink. It just That's why they got to glass every planet after a battle. <laughs> because just, oh, because just they've just battle. blasted it <laughs> with just, toilets? After they just, like... Just weeks of fighting and just everyone just like shooting their pants as you would in yeah. one of those battles. Yeah. What a great topic. I <laughs> see this is like this is where I like to go with this lore, I think. Um I wanna I wanna I wanna know the ins and outs. The well the ins is the food, the outs we're already talking about. <laughs> what are those guys who do like uh do all the robot stuff on it like the the borg looking guys oh the those, um those uh, the admech the adeptus mechanicus so they're like this they're like the techno priests who live on mars but there's also an army for that as well they're the ones i hate painting i, like I don't think guys. i'll ever collect them they, they are oh, really yeah they have so many little they look really cool but it's because they have so many little greebly bits and there's just stuff jutting out mm -hmm. everywhere there's tiny little antennas everywhere they look amazing nightmare models oh. to paint oh man because i like the look of those guys i like the sound of them and they're, they're like into like they are really cool like robot stuff. the thing with warhammer is is you look at an army and go like that looks cool and you get it no matter what anyone says this is per my personal preference on what i like in warhammer mm. like some people really don't like tau because they they're all space they're, they're space gundams and i love that about them but i also love that tower like 
one of the the, the the good boy factions as much as they uh you know they got some shady shit underneath because of course they do but um, but there weren't any good guys in no 40K. there isn't i thought they were all bad there there's like there's like characters who are the closest thing to good guys but no overall the, the uh overall the vibe of warhammer is that there are no good guys in this hmm like overall that's fine that makes it fun yeah i think because it's fun to be a bad guy in this setting like when it, when everyone's bad it doesn't matter it's different flavors of bad like the tau bad is like that their leaders are like basically mind like there's like a pseudo mind control thing but they're also like join our empire or we'll we'll take over your shit anyway they're like massive colonizers mm. um what and- about the the mummy guys the mummy the, the green robots oh they're fun like the they're like an ancient race of, the, of people who got tricked by some old star gods uh and their souls got put into robot bodies and they were slaves for a bit and then they uh then they decided to trick the gods and then trap them in their machines and now uh then they went to sleep for millions of years uh and they think the galaxy is theirs so now that they've started waking up mm-hmm. again they're like what the fuck is all this sh- what is all this crap everywhere? And they're just like, no, we're taking our stuff <laughs> back, basically. They're like, we, this is ours. Uh-huh. And everyone's like, no. And they're like, too bad. And so we're like, well, we got to stop the Necrons because otherwise they're just going to own everything again. They're Britain. Necrons. Necrons. They're like robot. They have like an Egyptian kind of aesthetic, uh, but they're kind of like mm. robot undying Terminator liches. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck some Ghost Swarm. If you got some painted ones, chuck some in artsy stuff. Yeah, everyone's Britain. <laughs> Seb need to see some painted. Some painted, um... Some painted Necrons. If you got some paint, Necrons. if you got some Necrons to chuck in artsy stuff, yeah, chuck them in. I know NATO's I've got, got some, a bunch of Necrons as well. I've got some here that have been smashed. Oh, <laughs> for my kids. Uh, here we go. I got my box of... Oh, yeah. Repairing stuff to do they've been sat on we've got doc ock here he's missing an arm or something uh ultron he's missing an arm too they're in here oh and then we've got some necrons he, yeah this guy got right proper squished oh he's mushed pull it pull it yeah he's uh he's taking a nap yeah and this guy's missing the rest of them uh he's just legs oh rodent The Imperium is the most Britain. It's if Warhammer's that's that's where it comes from, right? Like yeah, it's is, why was it, it invented. Yeah, whenever you in, see uh, like stuff to do with advertising, it's all British because yeah, they're they're um they're in Manchester. That's where my yeah. uncle lives, actually. Yeah. If I ever was to go stay with him, be like, Uncle, Uncle, can we go to Warhammer World? And it'll be well, like, when hey, you're older. older. When you're older, it's like, I'm 32. Not old enough, son. Not old. You're not old enough for Warhammer. Maybe I'll take you there when you're 40. Um, oh, yeah, pretty good Necrons. Got some Necrons in the artsy stuff area of the Discord, if you want to see. Am I in there? Did yeah, you? Is that what there. I clicked we're earlier? We're in there now. Oh, you snuck me into there, you bastard. I want yeah. to be on another Discord. Well, it's a good Discord. Leave, leave afterwards there. It's okay. I'm not going to be offended. I don't know how to change it. <laughs> I'm in the chat thing now. Um, so it's not in the voice chat we're in. It'll be in a place called Guild Hall Artsy Stuff. Describe it to me. Okay, Describe um, me what right, they look like. Picture. So... We got some Necrons, and they look like they've just woken up from their tomb world because they're real crusty looking, uh, and they're like big robots. There's one with like three legs, and he's got massive blades for arms, and he's like swinging them around. Uh, there's another Necron who's kind of like running forward, and then there's like a Necron overlord who looks really regal, and he's got his like scythe kind of planted down looking over his okay. uh, subjects. Is that a good enough Oh, that sounds picture? pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess the question would be, no, we talked about that. I was kind of like, oh, if I didn't know what Necrons were, but no, nah, we talked about what Necrons are. 
Terminator, Terminators. Terminator liches. Ooh. They have like arcade. They have like arcane tech that's kind of magic at the same time. And their guns. What's the disassemb- green glow about? Uh, that's that's their arcane tech. So they basically okay. shoot like gauze energy, uh, which which uh, deconstructs you on a molecular level. So don't get shot by it. Deconstructs you. Wasn't there something about bones, like collecting bones? Who's collecting bones? Oh, uh, like that's like a... corn. Uh, corn and the chaos god, uh, chaos gods. Uh, that's the world eater faction. Uh, that's the blood for the blood god skulls for the skull throne thing. Oh. They're fun. That's a, a chaos faction. So, uh, you know, you have the Imperium, which are the humans, and then you have chaos, which is humans who turn traitor and work with demons. Uh, and there are four demon greater gods of chaos. There is Corn, Nurgle, Slanesh, and Zinch, and each one represents like a duality of aspects. Corn is the blood god. Uh, war, anger, all of that shit. You know a lot of this stuff. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch. I, I like. I, is... I like Warhammer, and you just kind of absorb it through accumulation. I also read some of the novels. This is the uh, this is this is the knowledge that'll help you in life. No, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, here's here's a good summary of some factions. Tom saying. Uh, I mean, you've got an imperial royal family, a government that's full of lords, a bureaucracy up its own butt, it literally goes to war with itself, massive colonization, and a system that literally grinds poor into food, food paste. Sorry, that's just humanity, I've just realized reading it. Uh, humanity does all of those things. We're in 40k? In, uh, yeah. Why well, don't... They're eating poor people. Yeah, pretty much. They do, they're just like, there's too many people on this planet. Make them into nutrient paste. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's fucked up. Who, most, most who's pe- doing that? Uh, the higher ups of the ecclesiarchy, which are the people who run the Imperium. They're just like, what's this oh world god. good for? Is it making weapons for us? No. Yeah, grind them into food paste. Wow. That's a rough go. Yeah, you don't. This is a world you don't want to live in because if you're just some Joe Blow, you're like working in a machine factory to make the bullets that the Space Marines or someone will fire. Uh, if you're not on the fr- if you're not Acadian on the front lines, uh, you're literally working until you're dead, which is not very long. No. There are no good guys. I'll say it again. No, no good guys, eh? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's that's uh, a bit of the vibe. Show me, show me what you're painting. I want to see. Me? Yeah. Okay, what I'm painting it? my Helldiver. It's a, it's a man. It's a man with a gun. He's got a little thumbs up going. Oh yeah, I like the vibe of that guy. Yeah, he's a hell diver from the game. Uh, I made him out of a, a Cassican, which is one of these guys. A Cassican. Yeah, so this is an Imperial Guardsman. This is just a. This is just literally like an army man in the 40k millennium. All oh, right. Yeah. And you've uh, and I've put, just put a little cape on him. I've converted him. I made a little cape for him. I I made I green stuffed his hand into a thumbs up. I modified his gun to make it look like more of a Helldiver's gun. Yeah. That's a lot of work in that little guy. Yeah, so, what, I've been what, working what, on him all month. What is, what's, what, what's he for? Um, He's for Tom. Ah. Oh. Tom was like, can you make a, can you, what would it take for you to kitbash one? And I was like, well, I can work on it on stream. So just buy the, buy the box of models for us. And I'll make a couple of you guys some Helldivers. What's Tom going to use them for? Like for just, 40k like Garsman dis- type stuff? I don't know, Tom, what are you going to use it for? Probably just a display yeah. of anything. It's <laughs> like, oh, no, I want to come in the mail. I'm just going to step on him. Uh, it's because that's, that's what I want to do. I want to see your money. As long as I can take photos of him before he steps on it, <laughs> like, I'm good. I don't get what he does with it. 
display case. That's nice. Going off camera here. I'm not stepping on Matt's painting. Yeah. You know Tom, he always he's Tom steps on everything. He's called the he's called the boot cruncher for a reason. He steps on all things uh things that can be stepped on. Yeah. So he must I mean must like gluing minis together like me. Except mine are all child inflicted. Although I have done my fair share of breakages as well. Uh, I mean, the minis. You know my you know my garage. Yeah. You know, if I if I if I ever drop anything down here, it's gone forever. Yes. It's like an abyss down there. I think I had like some little skull things I was like gluing onto a little little portal gate model. Yeah. And it just like popped up. And I was like, where, where, where did it go? That's gone forever. I, I heard it. It was like I felt it on my foot. And it's like, no, that was the last of it. Yeah, it does that sometimes. Into the huh? void it goes. So that cape's looking all right now. Okay, so... My son had a cool idea for like a tabletop thing. Yeah. And I don't think it exists. And he was bummed about it. What do you got? It, you know that show, uh, Attack on Titan? Oh, yeah. I was trying to find like if there's like a skirmish kind of thing with like Titans and like miniatures and stuff. And it doesn't exist. Like I couldn't find anything. Is there like a board game for it? Maybe? There's a board game, but it's like little cardboard standees and stuff. Like I wanted, uh, like I could, I can find like display models and stuff. But I can never find like little miniatures and stuff. Yeah, like a war game. It sound, yeah. If, if like I feel like that would be great for like uh like a three by three skirmish kind of thing. You have a little town set up. You have like a couple of titans like walking through. It does sound fun, yeah. And yeah, you just. Boost around your little, uh, what do you your, call the, um... Your suits. Oh, um, it's, it's, it's letters. EV, EVO, uh, AD, what's it called? <laughs> it's the... Omnidirectional ODM. ODM. ODM gear. There we go. Can't believe I forgot it. But yeah, I feel like that could be a great tabletop game. Kickstarter. <laughs> Kickstarter coming, coming tomorrow. Uh, yeah, help help me make my sons. I have no idea where you would start with that with that concept. You'd have you'd need models and stuff. Probably, with a license. Probably could like <laughs> kit bash, some, kit bash some stuff, right? Um, yeah, you could easily kit bash that. You think so? Like, how how would you do it? How would you kit bash some Attack on Titan miniatures? Like, if you if I wanted Captain Levi right now as a little twenty eight millimeter guy oh. how would i do it i mean the easiest way would be to pay someone to make a sculpt of them in 28 mil scale the easiest okay, if i and didn't that, want to pay <laughs> a lot of money well then you'd be buying warhammer and kit bashing that and that can also be expensive oh because i could 3d print stuff i've got 3d printers yeah like, so well um... i mean look for models that like you could you could buy if you want to like do it like without releasing a game yourself, you could you could like go and find 3D sculpts of Levi and them on like Colts 3D or something like that, and then print them at 28 mil. Mm. Ghost Swarm says there's a TTRPG called Titan World, according to the net. Titan World. Be the way. We'll look it up.
I'm just surprised that there was nothing. There was no like any kind of miniatures or anything. It's all just display pieces. I don't know. This Titan World's giving me a whole bunch of like watches <laughs> and like jewelry. Min what have we got? TTRPG. Let me put that in there. Amanda Riley, Nina the Messenger, Titan World by Infinite Gestures. Gestures. Welcome to Titan World. Oh, I see a little bit of German here. I see rules. No, I want the miniatures. I want little men. I want little. I want Titans. I want. Because I feel like those would be pretty fun to paint. Like, uh. I have do. Have you I seen agree. the show? Yeah, no, I finished it. I haven't finished it yet. I still oh. got, still got to get through season four. I, I liked season it took, four. It's, took a very it's different kind turn. Of like a, it's like a yeah, it's a lore heavy kind of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm loving it. Uh, well, look, it's a it's a sprint to the end from season four. All right. Because yeah, my, I, was, I was watching it with my son, and he was quite enjoying all the like titan battles and stuff uh, uh give see wait are you in what part of season four are you in just the start like the first four episodes five episodes yeah yeah pretty early in uh so there's some like new stuff they have to set up in that area and then from like episode six to i think it's either six or eight onwards it's just like go time from then on okay yeah. that sounds good it is it is like there's like a slow part at the start of season four establishing uh gabby and falco and those that set of characters and that side of the world mm. and then and then and then uh and then mikasa and everyone show up and then it's like oh shit i love her it's oh shit time after that hmm but yeah, no, there are you are at no shortage of good fights if you're only there in the season. Alright, All right, that's good to know. I because I was worried it was just getting into like preachy lore town. Uh they they need to yeah. set it up because they're kind of doing like the end game of their series at that point. Because there's only four seasons. Right. Um, like they're doing the end game setup of like why this is all happening at that point. Alright. Well, I need, I need something to do with the kids on school holidays. Maybe it's yeah, finish, finish watching that. the rest of Attack on Titan. I think I think overall it's a like really a good series. Yeah, I now yeah, yeah I've been loving it. Although I will say like the the first season uh, opening credits music is the, the best, best one. one. I don't yeah. know what they'll do. It. I can I don't know say what they're doing with the rest of them. I can say now that I've seen the whole series, it never the, the opening music of the first one, it never got better. Like two season mm. one and a half and season two and three, like had some good ones. They're like Sasageo, Sasageo. That's a good song. But uh oh, yeah. <laughs> Shinwo Sasage. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a that's a that's a banger. But like nothing beats um the Jaeger Hunter one. They're just so, so good. Yeah. It's badass and it kind of really uh really slaps with that like, guitar and stuff yeah i have those on my spotify actually like the uh the full versions L uh is it linked horizon linked horizon does them it's like the the it's artist the band yeah it's like a full orchestra orchestral band mm. they've done it well they did all of them too Oh, they did all of them? Yeah. Okay. I wonder why they changed it so dramatically between seasons. Probably just to do something new. Is it, Because I don't watch a lot of anime. Is that normal for anime to yeah. kind of like yeah, change yeah. up the intros? Yeah, yeah. They change intro every uh, season or half a season. Okay. Usually always. Is that yeah. just kind of just to tease what's going to happen in the season or usually yeah there's clips of like the new characters and the vibe and they try to the the vibe of everything yeah hmm i think i feel like though like captain levi is kind of like i i was kind of like oh, yeah matt mercer's okay and stuff oh, for, all the for all stuff and it's like oh oh uh, yeah 
and it was yeah nat <laughs> naturally with my kid he, he's, he's not going to read all the um, oh fair so, yes and i did see that yeah I, I i don't mind matt versus levi he's pretty good i um i watched the whole thing in japanese and um no it's just i mean it's just what i do i guess but uh, I, I don't know japanese so it was well subtitled uh, no i look yeah i i mixed about subtitles because i want to watch the action but with subtitles even if it's in english if there's subtitles there i'm just oh, reading like the subtitles yeah, the whole time fair fair yeah i think i got used to it because i'm watching one piece now as well long i really want to watch that that new the, the netflix one uh that the Godzilla movie that came out oh minus like, one earlier this year yeah and that's that, only in Japanese apparently that is the best Godzilla movie period like apparently heard that. apparently it is so so good I I'm, is, did I'm it come my out list. in Australia at all I don't or, know actually because I know it was in in the states and everything I'm not sure if it I actually came it, out in I want to say it there. did I, but I just don't remember hmm I'll, I'll wait for it to come onto a streaming service that I don't have a subscription for. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's always the way, right? It might already be on one and we just don't know. It would be like Paramount or something. Yeah, it's the one I don't have. That's the one I don't have either. Nah, Godzilla minus one. Also, uh, I forgot to say hello earlier, Screen. How are you doing, bud? Godzilla vs. Kong oh, is in on. cinemas now. Screen has That's said, the new one. you met at PAX, right? You were on that panel together. Yeah. 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 We're, yeah, we're super buddies. Best best friends. Yeah, I was like, you hang know? on, hang on. He was in Australia at the time. I was like, hang on, there's a connection here. Yeah. Yeah. Acquaintances. Yeah. From PAX. I just realized I fucked up a bit of this cloak that I spent ages on. No worries. Oh, I need coffee too. I only have one this morning. Go make one if you want. I'll, I'll the essence leaving me. I'll hold down the fort. No, no, no. It'll take too long. I've got like a espresso machine. You got stuff. a fancy boy. Like do the milk and everything. Yeah. No, I don't like the other stuff. What is it? Plunger. I uh, have no. Uh, I what have do you no. Do? Um, I go to the uh, local store and buy a really boutique brand. Um, it's called Boss. No, I just, I, what? It's just it's I just buy cans of boss coffee or like dare. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not a oh. coffee, I'm not a coffee guy. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. How can you be in Melbourne and not drink coffee? Because I'm not from here originally. So I and I, I also mm. um when I was in university, I was like, I don't want to be hooked on coffee. So I just I just didn't my entire life. And so um I never really like I don't I only really drink coffee when I'm going on a stream and need to have like a bit of extra energy pop. But other than that, I'm just, I just don't drink coffee regularly. And that means I don't have a taste for coffee, which is great because I can drink anything and I don't care. It's purely functional for me. Must be a parenting thing. Cause I wasn't like, I wasn't into coffee that much. And then I became a parent. Like I just need this to stay conscious at this point. But that's why you get trapped. I feel it. So you get trapped because then you think you need it. Well, because Jess does. It. Jess is Jess isn't a parent. Well, she's a lizard parent, but Jess drinks coffee every day and she doesn't have it. She has a headache, and I'm like, this why, this why, if you are dependent on the coffee. Ghost Swarm is now also back with coffee, and uh, Scrain's trying to decrease their caffeine intake, and it hurts. And I'm like, this is why, this is why no coffee. But also, there are days where I need coffee or I can't function because I'm pretty sure the caffeine and it makes my ADHD like actually function to a regular human level. And uh, so hmm. th that's the other downside. It's like when I have a day where I have less the energy, I, it's uh, it's bad. Is my oh well? 
I think I yeah. I think I'm just in that ecosystem now. What's the 40k equivalent? <laughs> just being like hooked on of something. Coffee? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm getting a bit of and Discord lag. Before. Maybe that's the maybe that's the problem. Like if ever if everyone had coffee in that universe, things would get done. They probably have like adrenaline like injectors the... straight into their heart though, right? Oh, probably. Take the fun out of it though. Just be like, like smell those beans. Yeah, fair. And the smell and the beans. What, yeah, what would be what would be a forty k roast of coffee be like? That would be that'd be very black. It'd very be probably it'd probably just be like thing. beans and water. Like it would just be like a, a like the American black coffee thing. I think. I think it would just be. Yo, oh, you mean like, man, that sounds depressing. It, yeah, it's grimdark. <laughs> it's like grimdark grim, roast. Grim, yeah, just pour dirt into some water and just. There you go. It's not even hot. Yeah. No, they gotta have. They gotta have something. Maybe something like super black, super, super strong. Oh. It's your yeah, wheel. It's your your, your like wheelhouse. Hit. I'm happy for you to steal this ship. Okay. What do you, What do you got? What's going on? about coffee yeah are we talking i thought it sounded like you were talking to someone else for a second no, no i was talking to you i thought like yeah because your line of sight was like down there I was, like, no this is, is me looking at my to? mini is he, talking to his... is he talking to his little man no Does he sorry, have I... coffee secrets my, my uh my ability to keep painting and just keep the conversation <laughs> going is has uh, been my downfall it seems um no yeah no i oh, was talking i was sort of saying to you like well, it's your wheelhouse of coffee I'm, I'm happy to take your lead on this Oh, right. Okay. I was just wondering if your little man had any coffee secrets in there. Just dunk him. Oh, you know, he might. But he's not, he's not said anything to me in a wash. month, so. Hmm. Uh -oh. Liquid veggie might inject. Undo. <laughs> I need an undo button. No mistake. For your mini? No, for my torch thing here. There we go. Just colored outside the lines. Ah. Uh, That's okay. It's pretty forgiving with like large props and stuff. I think when you like yourself doing something super accurate. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I don't even know how you do it. Um, patience and a lot of fixing. But also, you like, you get kind of, you, you get good at learning where to place some of this stuff, so you can be a little bit sketchier and messier. Like, right now, I'm just kind of, like, I've got a really light gray, and I'm highlighting the knuckles of him rather than the whole finger. And it's going to look like I've done the whole finger as, as, as such. So, uh, on his gun hand, you can now see it's a lot brighter here. So I've just put little dots on all of his knuckles, but now it looks like the hand has a lot of definition. Yeah. Yeah. That mm. kind of stuff. Is there an order you go into? Like, all right, if I start on his like butt flaps down here, that's easier to get to than later. So I uh, kind of, well, actually, I've got some, I literally, you know, I've got minis everywhere, so I can show you like the stages of it. Um, okay, so here's a guy. Here's a guy. Uh, here's another guy. That one's a good one. Uh, and then where's finished guy? Yeah, it's finished guy. Alright, so. Start off with, like, spraying it. Like, you know, like, the regular spray of the thing. So I spray it in the color that's mostly going to be on the model if I can. So I got a green spray to spray this guy because he's got green mm. armor. A little booty in there. Um, and then from there, I'll, like, establish a base coat. Now, that'll be basically just like blocking out the colors, but I don't do it in one area, I do it for the whole model. So, this guy here is is blocked out. Like, I've got his skin done, uh, I've got his cape done, mm. I've got his metal on his thing. Like, these are all just the flat colors. And they're all done now. I mean, I've not done all of it, but uh, you know, it's, it's the road to being done. Oh, yeah, just... That looks... That looks... <laughs> 
<laughs> if that was my model, I'd be like, yeah, it's done. Um, from there, that's I'm great. Gonna, I'm gonna shade it. So like this model's blocked out, but I've put a shade on him. Now shading is like how you get, see how like these recesses on this banner is like dark. Mm -hmm. That's what recessing, that's what shading is going to do. It's going to go into all the cracks and make it look nice. So after you're done base coating and blocking all the colors out, you get specific shades or you can get one shade and do it all over to tie it together um, to put it in the cracks like this. So they, they start having definition now and separating it. And this is where you could call a model done. Like you could say like after the shading's done, that's job because you've, you've added like a depth to it. Uh, after that, you kind of get into highlighting territory. <laughs> this one's kind of highlighted, but he's got the... Uh, so you can see like on his panels. On his panels, he's got like the dark recesses in there. Uh, however, you can see like on his browns of his leather, I've done like a texture, mm. like a little model texture there. So that's me highlighting uh, the belt. And uh, I think I've done the skin as well. So the skin looks nice and uh, mm. uh, developed. And he's got like the, 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 oh God, what am I talking about? The, all of the browns now have texture. And then mm. if you want to go further again, you do what I've done with the hell diver and highlight it again. And usually highlighting just like amps up the contrast. So like I've got, high, usually the highlighting is like just on like the gun up there. So it like makes it stand out from the other colors. Um, you can see on the yellow of his capes, you'll see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but on all of the corners of his yellow, there's like a super bright, like a yellow white in the corners mm. to really emphasize the corners there. Um, and on his cape, I've done the same thing. So you can see like a lot of layering on the cape here and a lot of highlighting because there's lots of different colors and layers of grays mm -hmm. and yellows in there to make it look like it's got a lot of definition. Mm. That's great. Yeah. But yeah, that's the stages. Mm. Like you kind of build it up, but that's not the only way to do it. That's the quote unquote traditional method. Your base, yeah, right. base shade highlight. Well, that's the way yeah. that Warhammer will teach you, and you don't have to do that. And what's what's the usual amount of time do you like to spend on a model? How long do you want to spend like on a model? Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> I like. I mean, it sounds like you could. But yeah, how scale long with is the good enough? You want to put in. Yeah, like where, where's the sweet spot? Well. If you have a lot of guys, like, you know, I was talking about like this orc earlier with slap chop. This is an entirely different, oh, yes. this is an entirely different method. I, first off, I dry brush it in black and white here. So it looks like this. So it looks like a cartoon character almost with black and white. Mm -hmm. And then I simply, this takes like 10, 20 minutes to get it to this. And then to this, Afterwards, I mean, ignore the base because I crafted the base as well. But um, to get all this color on, depending how quick or how how careful you are, this took about an hour. Because oh, after after okay. establishing this, this is the easiest way to paint, in my opinion, like with contrast paint, because you just kind of slap mm. it on and it does the does the shading and all that for you. Like you skip, you skip the shading, you skip the basing, you skip the highlighting because contrast paint is designed to do all of that in one. And so mm. you get from there to there in really quick time. However, that's really yeah. You get you get my hell diver. Uh, how many streams have I done? Uh, about four or five streams of making this guy. Three hours a time. With talking wow. as well. This guy has taken about twenty hours. Ooh. By comparison, so. Scale yeah. is what you want to do with it. This guy here is literally my favorite character in all of Warhammer. This is Farsight. Uh, I've been painting this guy for mm. about 10 hours so far, and he's only just getting he's only just finishing getting base coated because I'm being incredibly careful with all of his bits. He's also a larger model, so they take a little longer as well. But yeah, you'll right. see like all of the details are the correct colors. Yeah, so Screen, uh, my Farsight if I have enough time, is going to be my competition piece for 
for my upcoming uh, tournament at the moment. So this will be like my top effort and he'll probably be like 40 hours by the end of it, 40, 50. Because you're doing it not, at that point you're doing it to like achieve something. So you're really being careful. Whereas if you just want to get a guy on the field, do the thing like the orc, just, just like, especially with armies that are like huge in number, like orcs, slap chop is more than fine because you just need to get them done. All of my D&D &D models are just get them done models. I think in my current lifestyle, the get them done method kind of sits me, suits me. Yeah, absolutely. Also because I use a lot of effects, lighting and stuff. It's more the textures that yeah. are important for me. I, re I reckon honestly, like a quick, uh, like if you if you slap chop your, you know those, um, you know how we did our set stuff for, for Split the Party season? All of the models I painted for mm. that were using Slap Chop and they looked fucking amazing under the lights in the camera. Like, you don't need them to look top notch when you're already adding Atmos to it. This is like the level at which that we're looking at these minis that we're doing a lot. Uh, like, they're under like flat white lighting. And the reason why we're painting them the way they are is because we're like literally trying to make them look like they have Atmos on them, but via painting instead. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm, look, I'm using it mostly to cover up my shortcomings as a painter. Yeah, yeah, just just do slap chop or like base coat shade. That'll be more than fine. But uh, like this guy, I want to say this guy was about six hours. He's a bit more basic, but just really nice. Yellow. Really this is the nice. the yellow you were talking about? This is the same yellow I was working on with the Helldiver, yeah. Mm. But like this one, I base coat it with white and white and yellow work together much easier than dark colors and yellow. You can kind of see it, like, this yellow on this looks really nice. And you can see, like, the orange is really vibrant. Like, I'm really happy with this model. Yeah, that's great. It's yeah. very bright. That's Eldar for you. They have very poppy color schemes. Eldar. Yeah. I don't think we talked about those guys. They're space elves, the Eldari. Spell. Is that the ones with like Slanesh and stuff, or are these uh, different? They're the ones who accidentally birthed Slanesh, yes, and then their race kind of is forever right. dying as a result. They got a lot of cool models, though. That dying. green guy I showed you was an Eldar as well. Speaking of, here is a half painted version of the same kind of squad. They're called Striking Scorpions. They just have big swords, and this guy's got a crab claw and a gun. That's all you need. Yeah. It's all you need. No, I, I really like the Eldar uh, because they have... They, their color schemes aren't just one army as the color scheme. They have, like, different little squads and they each have a different color scheme called Aspect Warriors. And I really love that because you only paint, like, five of the same guys versus, like, Orcs where you paint green skin and metal and armor for, like, a hundred models. <laughs> no. hundred models themed. Man, it sounds that. like it's... it's it's really tough to just pick one yep. army. It sounds like they've all cut some kind of like cool angle to them. That's why it's like, look up what you like, the look of, and then start getting into it. Orcs, or I would say orcs are like my favorite faction in terms of like silliness and fun though, because all of their stuff is ramshackle, which means you can, you can paint it, you can intentionally paint it rusty or like dodgy on purpose because it looks correct for an orc. Because their stuff, mm. their stuff is literally junkyard aesthetic. Like if you look at official art yeah. for them, they have like random pops of like yellows and reds and blues and greens, just because that's the metal scrap that they've got from somewhere and then they've slapped it on the side of their car. All right. Sounds like they're kind of pretty forgiving. Uh, a lot of that stuff. I would say orcs are the most forgiving in terms of anything that you want to do with them, because you can you can literally get like a toy car, like a like a like a little Volkswagen Beetle or something, slap a bunch of like metal panels on it, and it's now an orc buggy. Actually, I have one mm. right here that I can show you. So I've got a project I want to do later uh, that is going to involve kit bashing this, but if I was to make this model unedited. This is called the Rucker Truck Squig Buggy. That's their car. Ooh, that's, that's cool. That's a car of theirs. They get these little these these little lizard things. They're called squigs. 
They shove him in a gun and then they shoot it at other people and then they go and bite them. And it's just a car right. full of them. Like, you see in the back there? Wait, are they driving it? Or yeah, they... yeah, they're driving the car, but there's like a little, there's like, it's like a ute and there's like a bunch of squigs in the back. And then this guy here, he's just shoving him in the gun. All right. How do you paint this? Like, do you paint it all separately and then piece it together? Or You can. Um, that's called sub-assembly. Uh, so you could, you could entirely paint, like, some of these separate to each other. And it'll be fine like that. Because how do you paint the little dooders inside. inside there? Usually, yeah. you, usually that it. piece will be, like, a roll cage that you can, like, stick on later. Like, it'll come as, like, the top oh, okay. piece. And you just glue that in after. Hard mode would be like just, just stick it all together and see what you get, and then just reach your mm. brush in. When you're working with like stuff like contrast paint as well, it will kind of help you out. If you were painting it like like Screen was saying, if you're painting it like a competition piece at that point, usually you will sub assembly it so you don't miss anything. But like, if you're just getting them done, sometimes you can just mm. you can just miss bits. Like, um, you'll actually see on the guy I painted for yours on breakfast. Uh, if you look underneath yeah. him, he'll actually be have a lot of black underneath. And it's because the way I sprayed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you sealed him. I keep, I keep him in this special case. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Get dusty. So I painted this for, uh, for, for Seb last year, uh, because he played literally a guy called breakfast on our, uh, Ooh. Bring it down a bit. I think you. I think you missed his focus range. Up, left, right. There down, you go. There you go. Up. <laughs> so that's breakfast. I. This is all contrast paint. I should add. I. I didn't do any regular stuff on this guy. I think I did some shading, but what I did was I sprayed him as a zenithal prime, which is pr spraying him from the top and the bottom. And uh, if you look underneath him, you'll notice he's way darker underneath, and that's just by the way of uh, how the primer went on. Hang on, I'll get him my other That's alright. This guy's a bit easier. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a cool model, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna have him as part of my guys. Yeah. He would make a good uh he would make a good uh leader for your squad called an orc knob. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Here he, we go. He would get a little bit more wounds and he's friends. a bit tougher to kill. He fits in pretty well. Yeah, he does, actually. He actually fits the color scheme because I think naturally what you've got is the same color scheme as those guys. Actually, no, yeah, he's a goth, right? Did you play a goth in our game? I think so, no, yeah. I can see. So, to see the checker marks on some of the other guys? Yeah. That's no, actually a that. trademark of oh. the goths. So, he actually fits in natively with the uh, the orcs you've already got. Same clan. All right. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's right. literally the color scheme that uh, you've, you've coincidentally got oh he's got the new one yeah, boys too boys. i can see some of them <laughs> they're the new sculpts they're nice he's done oh, a good cool. job on those yeah i don't know why he's giving them to me because you're a cool a guy yeah yes, so go over the play sh shatter point and then you leave with orcs <laughs> I think I think I'm almost I'm pretty much done with these torches. I think I'm actually almost done with this guy too. I think I need to I need to get him off this base and put him on a new one, but like I'm pretty I'm pretty good to call him almost done. I think oh actually the only thing I need to do is just highlight these fingers a little more on the thumb. Thumb with the thumb up. Yeah, I've got three now. Four. So I got four ready to go. These little babies. Be, this is what I'd be doing if I ran an Etsy store. I'd just be printing these, painting them. That's fair. You, you know, probably, oh, if, if I was going to do that, I'd have to get one of those uh, multicolor filament things. That would save some time. I've seen those going around too. That's cool. Do you, oh, you already looked at the new Dungeon and Lasers things. We were talking about it, didn't you? You've got some. I've got that's that's in the new video that's coming out. So ah. it's gonna be all the cave stuff. 
So yeah, these, these I, torches are going to be part of that setup. I uh, I almost got some. I think I I decided against it in the end because I was like, oh, this is too much. This is too much of an impulse buy. I shouldn't. They're cool though. They got some good, some really nice details to them. Problem is, um, I can't take even... them to my. I can't take them to my games. Is the only issue. They they pack they pack pretty flat. Uh, when you when you're like assembling them. Yeah. Because they. Yeah, I've got some, I've, I've got it all set up around the corner. <laughs> the corner. I'd grab some, but um, no, it's alright. Yeah, no, they're all. <laughs> you, know, you only just have to wait until you see the video. Really. Uh, oh, well. Atmosica exclusive. All right, go. so the thumb up looks like nice and defined now. Show me. There we go. He's he's giving a thumbs up. And so am I, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Put my breakfast away. He's in there. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Oh, actually, we're yeah, we're we're nearly at one o'clock. We can uh, pop off pretty soon if you're feeling it. Yeah, I, I kind of I don't want to start any new new projects here. I, I could just show you what else I've been working on. Here, yeah. Yeah, give us a little go. Uh, other than that, we've got we've got a big terrain project I'm working on in the background. Nice. I've been printing a lot of these like big files. So I've got like this big uh, raised play space around the corner yeah uh, and it's got like these eight inch size like removable files mm -hmm. uh, so i've just been printing off these uh it's almost like ruins kind of thing and they're, they're the perfect kind of size for these kind of like terrain pieces let me see yeah let's go up let's move, move it move it fellas here we go nice we got some some cute some squares. Hang on, let's get let's get this guy. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, we can see some some ruins. These are like these tiles. So they're they're eight inch tiles or something? I can't remember. I've got there I found them on my mini factory. I can't remember the name. Hey, of those it, look but... nice, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna paint these guys up pretty pretty simply and I've got enough that I can make a pretty big looking ruin set which would be cool that looks good yeah that's dope some good detail in them although I will say like I had to kind of um, do a kind of custom remix of one of the tiles because a lot of them have a lot of this kind of like bumpy kind of surface area you can see all it's like bricks and stuff mm. so I had to kind of a more kind of like smoother version of them so this one's kind of like a like a little flatter kind of version on top so i can actually place things yeah which should be good because i've got all these like um 3d printed uh tiles like, like these portals and stuff they're big tiles too that's oh wow oh they're the phone sit, portal sit. yeah yeah awesome I'm not sure if that thing's got battery in it but that's gonna it's gonna be a cool cool setup that's fun some D, D. yeah I like that I'll put some orcs in there for now yeah that looks cool gives you a good idea of the scale yeah yeah that's great oh the big boy this guy's coming through hmm so i gotta paint all these up should be pretty easy. Terrain's pretty forg forgiving with a lot of uh, mm, mm. that kind of stuff. That's so it. cool. Um, yeah, so that'll be on that big setup around the corner. So I'm doing a cave video first, and then I'm going to be doing some ruins stuff. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Sometimes with terrain, it's just like I just want to have this cool, these cool ruin set, and we're going to see how that kind of comes together yeah in the future that looks kind of awesome what you like I, to do i really like those those uh tiles that you got there they're nice you gotta do something uh, with those i can't remember the name of them i'll see if i can 
dig it up. Uh, I had to shrink them a little. Like, they're like 99.5% scale. Yeah. Uh, just to fit on the stage top system that I'm using here. Yeah, fair, fair. Oh, yeah, man. I can see if I can find out what they're called. But they're cool because they kind of like stack together. I'm, I go back and forth on like battle mats and stuff. Mm. You, I really yeah. like the texture on this, those. That's the one thing I. The, yeah, that's kind of. Sorry. No, you go ahead. I was gonna say it's so one thing I, I I wanted to have on our uh, set shoot was a textured battle mat. Like ours looked great anyway, and we had quite heavy uh, stuff going on top of them. But uh, yeah, like some kind of visual texture would be ideal overall. Ah, oh, here they are. Uh, Ancient Ruin City Modular by Terrainify. Terrainify. Okay. All right. Okay, let's give them a look. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Seb. Also, yeah. Thank you for coming on today, bud. Always good oh, hanging pleasure. out. Pleasure. Under the guise of work. <laughs> mm. Uh, but uh, we just spruked these guys. But where can we find you? What What are you doing around the internet? Oh. And how can we? Uh, how can everyone in the chat? find you on your stuff i know we've got you tagged in the uh the title of this stream but where else do you exist well if you if you like this stuff and you want to see like cool lighting and fog and D, &D setups focusing a lot on D, &D uh this year um, but we kind of branch out into some other wargaming stuff as well uh if you want to see more of these kind of like atmospheric setups come find me on youtube at atmosphere uh and um yeah check us out um i do a whole bunch of like 3d printable type designs and stuff as well so if you're wanting to kind of get some more immersion in your game spaces and that kind of thing we've got a store as well so i think it's all linkable through the um youtube page um so yeah if you just i think i think if you pretty much just look up like tabletop fog on uh, YouTube it should be one of the <laughs> should be one of the first guys. You'll yeah. see my little 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 uh, little blue lightning face uh, on there. But yeah, that's me. Yeah. And thank you everyone for joining us. I'm Matt, a uh, professional DM, and do the content stuff around here. If you're new here for the first time, please stick around. We do a regular painting stream every Thursday, but I'm also doing an extra one for my Tyranids leading up to a tournament on Tuesdays or Tyranid Tuesday. Uh, starting around the same time as we did today. Uh, what else? You may see some stuff in the next coming months that Seb and I have been working on for the main show that I do on YouTube for Split the Party. We just have a self-titled D&D series, and we've been bringing some filmmaking uh, flair with the help of Seb uh, uh, to that show as well. So keep an eye out for that soon. I, I'll, I'll be teasing it as it comes up as we go. But... Uh, yeah, if you see it around, please give it a like, give us a follow and all that. And we're gonna raid today, Tavern Keeper Miniatures. They, uh, this is a new raid. We, I like raiding out to people that are uh, in the Warhammer tag at the moment. And this guy uh, is doing some miniature madness, painting nine more Frost Vipers, Space Marines by the look of it. Uh, so let's give them a hey hey. Uh, we don't know them. We are just going to show some love to the other painters in the community. So uh, be kind, be nice. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Plus bloody trip. Thank you. Raid. There we go. <laughs> good. See you later, everyone. Have a good one. Oh. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. All right. See you later, everyone. I always trigger that raid late. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>